like Silver James and Steven Just like some girl, Jimmy Olsen And you're in luck, because they're ahead Man, that song is a bop. Hey, oh, I'm the adorable Omni Dog here with the adorable Comic Slayer and her flirkin. How doing, Omni Cat? You know, I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. Let's show off our shirts because I think we both have boss shirts. Yours looks like a, is it a clerk? People like shirt? yours more. <laughs> is yours a clerk's shirt or I see? No, no, you'll see. Mine's my gal, Silky Silk. It's a good one. Thank you. Good one. Uh, this is actually Oliver Tree. Oh, I, I thought I saw Kevin Smith there, Silent Bob type. <laughs> no, just a weird Oliver Tree shirt. Uh, everything Oliver Tree related is cool, man. My favorite. Uh, this guy doesn't may not like it, but I oh, do. Who cares what he thinks, right? Come right. On. Is Kane in the conversation? Are you here yet, Kane? That's her favorite thing. Kane is Wait. in the chat. She is in the chat. Oh, there she is. Good. I did it. Did it for you, Kane. There's Kane. What up? William Lee, also great thumbnail. I will tell upper management since she created the thumbnail. Uh, we have a mystery topic. So uh, that's why the show's a little bit late because upper management needed time to create that. Uh, and it took some time and I said, doesn't matter. We can do it 15 minutes late. Just you do you upper management, whatever she needs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, good afternoon. Y'all. Ha ha. Did you guys factor in Omar going over? Oh, he went over. We weren't watching. <laughs> we didn't know that. <laughs> the, the comic God smiled down upon us and said, upper management, take extra time because Omar is going to try and F with the show. <laughs> uh, Rising Phoenix is here. Real dad is here and internet like dad that. is here. Uh, okay. Huff is yelling at me <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> But Freddie's chastising him. Huff, that is in the correct use of E instead of Y. You use E <laughs> when the following words begin with I. Freddie would know. Well, I'm not pronouncing incorrect Espanol. So tighten that up and then we'll go for it. I mean, this is a serious show. Come on. Uh, Ilan's here. Did I show you my hey. birthday present from Ilan? Uh, I think I, I saw it on a, on a show. Oh, you did? I yeah, don't think. Watch, right? Yeah, let me show it because I don't think this show saw it. the the Kristen The Kristen followers, the people who follow you to my show, I don't think they've seen it, and I want to show it off again. This is what Elon from Wales sent me a Swatch watch because he knows I collect Swatch watches, and that I froze there for a sec, and that I love peanuts. Elon sent me this awesome watch. And Elon, thank you so much. I had a lovely birthday, and this watch was definitely part of it. Elon, are you sending me a watch for my birthday? Is that, is that happening? 420? Or he's <laughs> sending you a doobie, man. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't that do either. that. I don't either. <laughs> Uh, Ari is here. Welcome. Well, if Ari is here, that means that uh, that other guy, very fine condition, uh, is over with. Although Ari may jump ship for us. I don't know. Gary, good afternoon. Long time watcher. First time in the chat. I usually watch O and O or bad. Oh, that's us. <laughs> Omni Cat and Omni Dog or Batter Days in the Wee Mornings on replay. I see. Well, hi, Gary. That's awesome. What's that profile pic? I don't know either. It's interesting. Some movie, it's, maybe? it's some creature. And then in the very background, it looks like George Costanza. <laughs> Any bald guy with a little bit of hair. <laughs> Glasses, yeah. Um, was this a Seinfeld episode I'm not remembering? <laughs> that would be a good one. That would be. Prime, welcome. Good to see you. 
Welcome to Gary. Don't be afraid to ask anything. I mean anything to Omnidog. He's a man of wisdom. <laughs> oh, oh, I've got you snowed. I mean, you can ask me stuff too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you can ask yeah. Kristen stuff. She's, she knows what's going on. She predicted something I that did. came true, right? We, we'll so talk excited. about that. Studio, good afternoon. Our friend Hayden. Hayden. Our friend Moonyan. Our friend Chris. Our friend Josh. All the friends. All our friends are here. Hayden, friend of the show. Hope our wonderful Omni Dog had a wonderful birthday. I really did. You want to hear about it? Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, it started out my movie buddy took Patty and I out to coffee and pastries at 9 30 in the morning. Normally, 9 30 in the morning is not an issue, except for some reason this week. We just broke the broke the streak last night. We'd both been staying up to like 3 a.m. We had crazy energy. I was reading. And she was... <laughs> yeah. I she was working on something and I was reading, and we just could not get ourselves to fall asleep till like 3 a.m. Last night we were in bed well before midnight. So your boy, okay. What how did that get in? Oh, 30. <laughs> I'm on a tangent myself. Oh, so we had coffee and pastries. Then we went out to this really cool Chinese food place that we'd never been before. And that it's a noodle house. I love noodles, but Patty doesn't because she thinks they're caloric and Kelly can't eat them because generally she has a gluten intolerance. These were rice noodles from us. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, a, a province or a location in China no, known as Michian, M-I-X-I-I-A-N, Michian. And they were made out of rice. They were rice noodles. So we all went there. We were all happy. The food was great. The service was great. It was unbelievable. Uh, then we were so full we didn't have dinner, but Kelly hung out, which is my favorite thing. And we read while well, she filled out job applications and stuff. She's still looking for a job. Um, and then we opened gift. None of them were comic related. Yeah, they were mostly from Kelly. They were football related or clothing related from Patty. I will say I got a uh, uh, an IOU. She, they hadn't come in time for three Harley shirts that I asked for. I asked for one. I said, pick one out of these. And she couldn't. So she got me all three. Nice. So I'm going to be. Wait, I'm going to be getting a glow up with with my Harley, new Harley shirts. I'm He's gonna... already dropped your boy. He <laughs> dropped glow up. <laughs> What's next? I don't know. Probably meh. But that birthday was definitely not. No, mid. This birthday mm. was not mid. not mid. It was it was what's it, it was good. <laughs> it wasn't mid. I don't know. What's so hello over there? Hello to MD. Hey, there's Huff. What soda Heart. is that? Yes. That is a Diet Coke. Okay. We are getting Diet Coke out of the house because we think it leads to sweets, which I'm sure it does, and it probably upsets our stomach and gives the rest of the world cancer or something. I don't know. I love Diet Coke, but we've decided it needs to go. So we have to drink it, of course, to get rid what of it. a sad day for you. Uh, well, we still have plenty left. Okay. <laughs> I'm so you're going, fine for now. Yeah. I have a backup can, and yeah, we just have to drink it. There's a there's 12 in the house. Barworks says, Warehouse Salem leads next Saturday along with train strikes. I think I'll be able to get to York, then get a bus. Hopefully back in York for the Lucy Sullivan signing in the afternoon. <clears throat> I am not familiar with Lucy Sullivan. Are you? I'm not. Partworks, yes. um, tell us why you're so interested in the Lucy Sullivan signing. Partworks is uh, a very tasteful comic book reader from the UK. Leon says, I'm welcome. They know to drugs, kids. Kids, yeah. To me, yes. Except I don't smoke weed or drink. I guess I don't do anything. Okay. I don't either. 
a mugwump from Naked Lunch. <laughs> okay. I don't know what any of those words mean. I don't either, but that's <laughs> what his profile pick is. Okay, cool. Uh, Chester says it's a great movie. The Roy Licht Lichtenstein swatch has my eye. Oh, Roy Licht Lichtenstein. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to spell Roy Lichtenstein. Roy Lichtenstein. Okay. Lichtenstein. No, not Lichtenstein. You had it spelled for me. Why didn't you? Lick ten nine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Swatch, watch, or just swatch. Oh, boss. Oh, they, there's two of them. Uh, okay, I will share this screen. Oh, no, I'm going to the wrong thing. Okay. Do 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 That one looks like a naked lady. Uh, okay, cool. Which one do you like? Uh, wait, I forget already who asked. Was it Gary? Gary, Gary, which one do you like? Yellow or blue? Do Elan is a kind person. Sent me literature about some issues I was having. Kindness appreciated in taking genuine interest in other issues and hardships. Others' issues and hardships. Elan is a great person. And I have to tell you that actually Huff, behind the scenes, he doesn't want me to say it. He's actually a nice person, too. I agree with I, that. Yeah, he's I, great, too. Right? But it's blowing his cover to tell it. And sorry, I just, I outed you as a good person, Huff. Welcome, Jesse Say What. Omni Dog, Omni Cat from Mega Shrimps. Happy Omni Easter and happy belated Omni birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, it was a good birthday. Yeah, maybe I can be, be like uh, Omni Cat and instead of a Green Day shirt for every day of the month, I'll have a Harley shirt. I was actually thinking that too. <laughs> I was like, you need to see how long you can go like I did in high school. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Should um, we, since Easter is coming, um, do you have a favorite Easter candy? Oh, um, let me just see if, uh, uh, let me just see if, uh, oh, it's the Coke can red one that you like. Coke can one. Okay, let me finish this one up and then we'll get to, um, the Coke can one. This one. Oh. And so where... Is that a swatch, though? I don't think... I don't know that that's a swatch. I think it's just a watch. Which doesn't make it even... Doesn't make it any less cool. It's still cool. Swatch, 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 she swatch, she swatch. Oh, pop art collectible wristwatch. That is pretty cool. Okay, stop sharing and start talking about Easter candy. Okay. Um, <laughs> I admit that I will shove a certain kind of peep into my mouth if I get it. Um, that's Just usually when, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember specifically what it is. Okay. Bunny or Actually, a I'll, chip. It, if there's nothing else in the house, I will shove a peep in my mouth. Okay. Otherwise. I liked yeah. peeps as a kid, but I wanted them a little bit stale. 
Did that cut the sweetness at all? Because they're very sweet. It kind of did. It made them like crunchy a little bit. I don't know. Mm. I haven't had them since I was a kid, though. I, I'm not really interested. Have you ever? Anymore. I've seen videos and we tried to do it where you stick a, a toothpick in each peep and you put them close together and then you microwave them and they oh, start yeah. attacking each other. <laughs> I haven't done that. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I, Easter candy. So it's specifically for Easter. So like the Reese's egg or a caramel filled egg. Yeah. The Reese's white eggs are probably my favorites. Um, that's white chocolate, white with chocolate yeah. peanut butter inside yep. peanut butter. Yep. Yeah. I love those. Um, every year Eminem used to come out with white chocolate M&Ms so they were like eggs and they were kind of bigger than regular M&Ms I remember that couldn't find them this year so I don't know if it's just the stores around me uh, or they're gone either way I was sad so yeah also I love the sweet tarts the like bunny and chick <laughs> sweet tarts that right. would come out every year they used to be big now they're tiny but back when I was a kid they were big and I love was, those. Are, were they, are they the same size? And just because you were a kid, they seemed big? Maybe. Maybe that's it. Because <laughs> everything seemed bigger when I was a kid. Yeah, fair. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think back of what used to go in Kelly's Easter basket. Um, uh, I, I, I can't think of anything more creative than to say probably Reese's eggs. Um, I know... Any of our uh, Jewish friends out there, like um, they're the, I think they're called the Geld, Geld, the coins, chocolate coins. Oh, yeah. We yeah, used to put good. those. Yeah, those are good. Um, uh, yeah, those M&M ones. I remember that. Uh, and then we just broaden out to our favorite candy, which, oh, yeah, of course, my movie buddy, besides taking us out. To pastries and um, coffee. She gave me a bag full of my favorite candy. And my favorite candy is, do you know? Have you, do you remember hearing stories? Because I'm going to tell you a story, of course. Um, well, all I can think of is the cluster thing that you would talk about all the time. Oh, goo goo clusters. Yeah. Very good. No. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that counts as a traditional candy. Is it chocolate or like candy candy? Um, it's oh, it's candy. It's a it's a candy. It's, okay. No, it's, I, I um, didn't remember. It's from Mars. Mars Incorporated. I don't know. Peanut M and M's. Oh, okay. That's and chocolate. I stick, dude. In, That's I stick chocolate. them in. Sorry. That's chocolate. I I didn't say it wasn't. Oh oh. I said it's a chocolate or candy, and you're like candy. Well. It's a but hybrid, the, I guess, but yeah, chocolate peanut involved. with a little bit of chocolate in the yeah, shell. No, peanut M&Ms are great. It's I love them frozen, so they immediately oh. got stuck in the freezer. They taste so much better. Interesting. I love the the white eggs in the fridge. Mm. They're better cold. The white um, Reese's the white chocolate Reese's. eggs? Yeah. White chocolate. Um, Mary is texting me. Where's Mary? Is she in the chat or is she at the game? Mary's at the Mets game. Ah, that's what she's texting me. Oh, Mary's at the game. He, she just told me she texted you. That's funny. <clears throat> okay. Good for her. Opening. That's probably opening day. Uh, Let's go Mets! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! <laughs> okay, we have viewers that contact us from everywhere. How did Dupe like your birthday? I can show you because this is the beginning of. Uh, that's not a good picture of me. I have. I'm. I'm pretty self. Well, that's the best one. So. Um, I'll share the screen and I'll show you the beginning of a new tradition called Adventures with Dupe that I'm going to start putting on Instagram and promptly forget because I don't do well. Window. Here it is. There's our food and dupe. 
can you can you see me at all? Yeah, yeah. there it is. Dupe is there. There's our food at the Chinese restaurant. So that everywhere I go, yeah, this bowl near us right there, that was the um, the Michian noodle soup. And then this was a, um, you could choose a dumpling, dumplings or a steamed bun. This was a steamed bun with fried chicken in it, a boneless chicken thigh. It was amazing. This is spicy bok choy. This was spicy greens, mustard greens. Uh, this covered up. Oh, um, that was a tomato. Um, uh, what's the word? Bar barata? Tomato and burrata salad. The cheese salad. And then this was the custard that came with it. This was the fixed price brunch or lunch sorry for like twenty dollars that all this food was amazing yeah and dupe was good. happy and my wife and daughter made me wear this pin that says i'll be 65 in 20 years <laughs> uh yeah so dupe dug it thank you for asking chris that's very kind of you okay stop it jess naked lunch is a david cronenberg movie based on the novel by william s burroughs <clears throat> I'm familiar with the book. I'd be interested to see how he turned that into a movie. But you guys apparently love it. Naked Lunch. Huh. Um, Bunk! Hey, uh, ahoy, Omnifauna. A happy late birthday to my favorite 60-year-old comics pontificator on YouTube. There's that number again. Wow. Thank you, Bunk, for thinking of me. News buoy. Howdy, y'all. Jess, how are you even here after partying so partying so late into the night and morning on your birthday? I figured you would need the weekend off. Either way, cheers. That's right, man. Age is, I mean, age is only a number, right? I've been feeling 65 since I was 30 years old, so I finally caught up to it. Here's DH. Hey, guys, I'm cracking up at one of my dogs, Jerry. Big fan of the show, apparently. Her head hasn't moved since Jess has been speaking. Oh. Hey, Dougie's <laughs> dogs. Hey, Dougie's dogs. Doug is a saint. Uh, oh, this is true. Texting me at 2 a.m. and then blaming me when I respond. I didn't blame you. <laughs> I, I didn't think you'd respond. I we were. I don't think it was 2 a.m. I think it was 1 a.m. And I actually think that was my, my birthday. So it was Friday morning at 2 a.m. It was past my birthday. And Freddie and I were texting like madmen. I'm like, okay, I got to go to bed. So I don't remember blaming you, Freddie. <laughs> this is for you. Uh, what do you think of the rumors that Disney is snatching Buffy rights away from license holders? Like, boom. I hadn't heard these rumors, Hayden. Hayden's much more on the pulse of these things than I am. So thank you for that. Uh, you know, boom is doing garbage things with Buffy. So I'm fine if they lose the rights. <laughs> they never reprinted the library editions that everybody wants. Or any of the season comics. What are they doing? That's their own fault. I'm fine. Snatch them up, Disney. <laughs> I third the fact that Huff is very nice and kind individual. Huff is nice. Huff's trying to deny it. <laughs> Huff uh, and Elon in my Discord behind the scenes do very nice things for people. Um, and Elon is uh genuinely sincerely one of the most kind caring individuals but he's kind of low key so it, it needs huff to he needs huff to go out and yell at people to like help with various things so sorry to out you huff but you're nice now this is for you too Talking about comics, Kristen, how many Peanuts hardcovers are you missing? Um, so many. I haven't bought one in ages. So, is this something that Freddie's teasing you about, or just wondering? I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm missing so many, Freddie. Freddie sent me like a few at some point, um, which was oh, awesome. he did. Yeah, but I'm missing so many. I don't have many at all. Let's see, I have like ten. That's it. Well, that's a good start. 
Yeah. It's better than zero. What so years? Many... Did... What? What years did do you have? Like varying. Um... What was your sweet spot that you that you liked it? Well, it, I just pick up years, so there's not a sweet spot here. But 1950 to 54, 59 to 62. That's good. That's good. Uh, 50 to 2000. 19, that's the whole thing. That's what it says. How big is that book? <laughs> it's just one of the box sets. That is weird. Yeah, I don't know. That's what it says. That's maybe his entire a, career. <laughs> maybe that's a misprint. I don't know. Um, <laughs> let's see. 70 to 76. Good. That, those are good years. 77, 78. 980, 81, 82. I think those are the ones that Freddie sent me. So that's that's all I got. That's a good representation. Yeah. I think I stopped in at 84. I went 1950 to 84. I thought you had all of them. No, oh. I wasn't. A, I'm, I don't have to. I mean, even the collector in me didn't want to just collect every single one. I wanted to collect the years that really meant something to me as a kid and as an adult. And I think in 84 is, is when those eight, 50 to 84 were I thought my favorite years. Mm -hmm. So anybody that grew up with them in the nineties, you know, may think 90 to 2000 were the best years. So I get sure. that. Uh, True graphic, our buddy from Canada. How are you? Uh, okay. We have lots of candy talk in here. Kane says Reese's peanut butter eggs are my favorite candy to eat during the Easter season. Chris agrees. Kyle the Mighty got here just in time. Finally, someone else appreciates Peeps. Underrated candy. Is it underrated? They're, They're everywhere. <laughs> There's like They're... books based on Peeps. <laughs> they they used to have a huge Peeps shop across the bridge here near where the Gaylord is, where Cat KatsuCon is and other like cosplay cons. They seem mm -hmm. to go to the Gaylord. Um and Peeps had a giant store there with a huge, not huge, it, it was a, a Volkswagen bug that was all yellow and painted Peeps. It was the Peeps Mobile. And so, of course, they had every flavor possible. Um, it was fun to go there, but it's not there anymore. I guess Peeps just couldn't, selling Peeps didn't cover the rent. With Peeps, each time I have one, either hate it or love it. It's weird, <laughs> LOL. There's Booster Green. I feel like they're polarizing that way. I feel so too. Feel that way. Half price peeps on Monday. Noir Wolf is here. Caramel Cadbury eggs for the win. I do like those too. Josh likes Starburst jelly beans. Those are good. And I haven't heard of these. Mike and Ike's lime flavored peeps. Not as mm. sweet as normal peeps with a slight tartness to them. I'll buy those at half price on Monday. Hate to agree with Josh Greathouse, but yeah, Starburst They're jelly beans are also great. They're the best. I'm going to Target to get some stuff, so I buy a bag or two, stick one bag in the freezer. Listening to all this candy will not be good for my diet. That's right. Gelt, right. Those coins. Chris knows what I'm talking about. Oh, I outed him. Oh, wait. Dan, that's Daniel. Sorry. <laughs> now I really outed you as Daniel. Uh, Cadbury mini eggs for Elon. Hut Destroyer says Chocolat de Mountain. Peanut butter M&Ms are the best M&Ms. That's an opinion. I think Reese's Pieces are better than peanut butter M&Ms. There's another opinion, except... That we all know. Speaking of that, what were you? What was your prediction that came true? Uh, people may remember, longtime watchers of the show. I was like, hundred percent, Boom is going to pull out a Lumberjanes Kickstarter, just like they did with Giant Days, where we can finally get the rest of these darn editions that they stopped making that you and I both have now uh, obtained. You on my recommendation. So, uh, <laughs> I don't remember that. No, of course. 
And finally, it's been announced. So that's happening very soon. I'm very, very excited. And I can't wait. I can't um, wait. Now, are, was there anything in the announcement that led you to believe that they will be finishing out like the big Lumberjanes? Uh, they went one through six, right? Yeah, there's no way they're not going to do that. Okay. There's just no way. I mean, how many volumes more do we need after six? Do you know? Like, I, I haven't done that uh, math. I, there were a lot of issues. So, like, it has to be several at least. Yeah. But yeah. I, there's no way they can't do that because, you know, a lot of people have been waiting for this. They did it with Giant Days successfully. So, well, after they printed the wrong ones and then fixed it. Um, <laughs> I think they'll learn from that mistake and actually make them like they are. <laughs> they gave a couple of different versions of those giant days, right? Well, they, they started coming out with the library editions. But if you already had the old editions, they were Kickstarter exclusives where you could finish them. So I think that's probably what will happen at this point, too. Oh, do you think the the lumberjanes that you and i collected will be kickstarter exclusive i do think that i okay. would assume they're going to do the same thing as giant days okay so if we, if we want to finish out our libraries we'll need we will need to do the kickstarter then mm -hmm. yeah okay because i was thinking oh they'll just go to retail and blah 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 but no we want them in the proper format. I do. I mean, I, I'm not going to like get rid of my six volumes and then no. buy some new ones. You know what I mean? No, no, no. I think that's why they'd be very stupid to not do that. Okay. I'm glad so we I'm have this talk that. because yeah. I was thinking something that not is going to happen then. Yeah. Okay. That was one of my favorite orders that came in. I got just one through six. It was in the box and I thought, oh. So it's fun. And I read them and I could it's been long enough that I can reread them when the new ones come in. Yeah, that'll be fun. We should do that. Oh, wait a sec. Oh, that's not. Is the queen there? No, it's a different mm -hmm. black hat. Mm -hmm. That's definitely not the queen. This one's let's awesome. let all of them in. Sorry. <laughs> let's let them all in. <laughs> let's go. This one's completely black. I don't recognize that cat. Uh, Lily has, you know, that cute face and little white shoes on, little white mm -hmm. socks on. Um, frozen peanut butter cups. Let's go, Matt. Booster, right on, man. Fun fact, M&M's was invented in 1941 in Newark, New Jersey by Forrest E. Mars. You look very dapper. Oh, that was when I was showing pictures of lunch. Yes, I thank you. I appreciate that. Um, oh, I missed some chocolate, Cadbury eggs, peanut butter, M Ms. I love frozen. <laughs> oh, it's somebody's cat. Oh, I see. Somebody's trying to get their cat <laughs> from our backyard. I'll let her do Aww. it. Deal with it. <laughs> Cats don't. <laughs> acknowledge you when you say come here come on it's time to go they're not like dogs i don't know my my cat listens to me sometimes does she she also plays fetch like a dog so well <laughs> wow that's fetch. cool yeah uh that's a good idea for the comic slayer revisiting seasonal nostalgia candy with the wonderful earth one jess that'd be fun there, there's a show idea for you if you needed them Needed one. Uh, oh, Bar is here. What up? Hey, Bar. Uh, oh, this is adorable. It's going to be all <laughs> before Jess gets here. It wasn't. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not 20 minutes behind usually. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate that. I wish. Uh, hey, Bar, how are you? Sent you a pit. Oh. DH sent me a Facebook pitch pic of Jerry watching me and us. Let's see. Um, Facebook, Facebook. Um, Jerry is one of the stray dogs that DH takes in and nurses back to health and then fosters them out. He's got a whole backyard ranch type thing set up for them. 
that's so cute. Okay, this might be hard to show. Wait, I'd have to open. It might be easier for me to open Facebook. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because I try and close it uh, when I have the show on. Uh, just a sec. Doug, 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 Doug. Okay. There's a cat in this picture, too. Oh, yeah, there we are. <laughs> this is really cute. <laughs> There it is. Here's the doggy right down here. Uh -huh. Can you see the doggy watching us? Down on the right. Yeah, really cute. Yeah. Is that the then, cat above it? Yeah. Adorable. And there's then we can look at Doug's shelves here too. Yeah, what's going on his shelves? <laughs> yeah, let's let's pick apart his collection. Let's see. I can see this looks like bron uh, Bronze Age of something. Yeah, I think we've got a, a nice DC selection here. Yeah, there's abs. Oh, Justice League. Jail. Okay. Oh, I see. This must be the Justice League section. Here's Justice League Dark, New F Justice League New 52, Ab Justice League Dark, yeah, Justice League D52. Then we got Superman, Batman. Some white books. Flash, I can identify Flash up there. DC Doom Patrol. No, I like Jerry. I wish I could have Jerry. Jerry looks cute. Okay. Uh, where are we here? Okay. Thanks, Doug. Here's my Discord. Now Alon's blushing. 1952,000 is the last one. It's full of extras. Was just wondering. Makes sense. Disney got the rights from Star Wars away from Dark Horse. Farmed some of them out to IDW. Then farmed them back out to Dark Horse again. Shrug emoji. I say reboot Buffy again, but this time keep Dan Moore for a full run, if only. Wow. But you know what? That went downhill fast, so I'm fine that he got out of that. Speaking of comics, here's Jeff, Jess, have you read Alley Oop? I guess it surprises no one that Alley Oop was still in the comic section when I was a kid. Um, it's about cavemen. Uh, aren't you 29? <laughs> yeah, times three, practically, um, or times two and a half. Uh, Alley Oop was, I caught the tail end of Alley Oop growing up. It's about cavemen that talk and get into antics and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I do remember it. I don't generally collect comic strips, um, but I loved them when I was reading them. True Gravity's doing great. Good. Fave Easter candy is Cadbury mini eggs. Jess, have you seen your special birthday message? Fiom Om Omar? No. I haven't. Where is it? Ilan is a treasure. I used to have a hardcover book called Peeps Ahoy that I ordered for Amazon for 80 cents several years ago just to get me free shipping. 80 cents. Ooh, Twix Easter eggs. Okay. That sounds good. That sounds so good. I would I definitely those. eat those. Yeah. Kickstarter will go live on April 9th. Thank you, James. Realize they should, Reese's Pieces should have a peanut variant. More peanuts. 
I am diabetic, so I can't have any sugary goodies, and my body can't tolerate stevia, which almost every sugar-free candy switched to about five or six years ago. Oh well, it just means more bacon for me. Yeah, I guess I guess uh, your husband can't have that stuff either, huh? Yeah, he can. That's what I was going to ask. Are you type one or two? Because he has to have sugar when he gets low blood sugar. So our oh. our house always has candy in it because otherwise, you know. Oh, he has to have sugar when he gets low blood blood sugar. Well, yeah, you have to get your sugar back up or you'll die. What's what's the pa what's the patch pump thing he wears? What's that? That's oh, insulin that's pump. insulin. Yeah. Okay, wait. Let's let's do a little. Are we gonna have a theology. diabetes education right now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Di diabetics don't pr produce enough insulin. Type one don't produce any at all. His pancreas does not work. Okay, so he has to have a pump that has insulin pumped into him. But hold on, hold on. Okay. We in. <laughs> you want to take this over? You want to educate Jess? You want this? Or you want... No, you can, you can translate. Okay. Okay, What's go ahead. Question? He doesn't understand what diabetes no. is, specifically type 1 and 2. I don't think he understands at all. Because someone in the chat said they're diabetic, they can't have sugary goods. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, we have to have sugar in the house. Because mm -hmm. if you have low blood sugar, you'll die. You need sugar. Mm -hmm. So he's confused by it. Uh, yeah, I know you have about a specific it. question? Uh, uh, I, I had to tell him your pancreas doesn't work. Correct. So that okay. is the main difference between type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is considered diabetes mellitus or mellitus, and I don't really know exactly, but it is where your pancreas doesn't function at all to where it doesn't produce any insulin. So not just enough insulin, but it doesn't produce any insulin. Um, therefore, you have to inject insulin into your body to do that, to counteract any time you eat any form of sugar, whether that's a carbohydrate or anything that turns into sugar into your body. But with that, since your body is not regulating it yourself, you have a tendency to sometimes have low blood sugars. And if that ever happens, then you have to eat sugar very quickly. Or like if I'm ever passed out, like Kristen would have to shove sugar packets or something like sugary that I could swallow or that can absorb in my skin or through my mouth, like through uh, orally and all that. So you have to do that otherwise to stay alive. Type two is where sometimes in type 2 diabetes, you'll have to have insulin involved. But historically, typically, the case is that you ingest more sugar than your body can handle. So your pancreas still functions, still makes insulin, but the insulin that it makes may not be sufficient enough or it may not make quite enough insulin to handle the sugar that you intake. And all that to say, that's why when people make diabetes jokes when it comes to candy and stuff, it's very annoying and not accurate. Okay. So, yeah. okay. So insulin, he needs at a regular in interval, but he yeah. also needs to keep his sugar level up. Um, yeah, because insulin regulates your sugar. He just, he does, his body doesn't produce it. So he has to regulate it on his own. He'll get alerts on his pump that say, Hey, you're going low or Hey, you're going high. And I know he's low because he'll act drunk. Like on your sugar? Body, yeah. Like your blood sugar gets low. So he's been like 50 before, which you should be around 100, 100. is perfect. Yeah. So, okay. So he has to ingest enough sugar he's to been get 20 up. before. And then he has to eat a lot of candy. And, that's and he like acts drunk know. when he's like that? Oh, yeah. He acts drunk. Yeah. So I always know. I'm like, oh, you need to go eat sugar. Like right now. <laughs> like you're slurring. Okay. Okay. Wait. <laughs> someone, someone is uh, trying to talk about more diabetes because some, some people need to get this black cat in our backyard okay. and they're ringing the doorbell and Patty is. Take it away. I'll be back. Okay. Um, he, he had to go deal with the cat situation. So he wants you to keep talking about it. So uh, News Pui, he originally mentioned it. It says, I'm type 2, discovered it January 2012. But the doctor suspects I was diabetic at least as of 2005. I take three medicines for it um, and no shots yet. But it could be heading that way. Hopefully not. Mm -hmm. News Pui, I know that sucks. Yeah, I know that's, that's always stressful and frustrating. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, the, the, the thing of it is, it's just, it's, it's one of those things where you have the, like, 
you can handle it. You can do it. Like, and that's, that's meant to be like, like you've got this, you can take care of it. And it's, it, it is, I mean, plenty of people have, have dealt with it and can do that. We've had me and Kristen have a close friend that basically had type was diagnosed type two and then kind of reversed it revert. Well, they, he did reverse it. And then mm-hmm. something happened and then it got worse and it happens. It depends on, it happens through age and everything and genetics and all that. So it can really suck. It can be hard, but there's so much out there that can really help. There's the diabetes buddy app is sometimes good. People like, or the glucose buddy app. Some people say is good. Like there's all sorts of stuff out there. And then if you're able to, I know with type two, they'll still be able to subscribe it or prescribe it. Uh, see, look into getting a, uh, a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor of some sort, or like a, a Dexcom or the, the Libre Freestyle, I think is one. So it's not delivering insulin to you, but it is constantly checking your blood sugar. And that can really help you understand what things spike it and what things don't. Because that's the most annoying thing. It's like, I can sit here and I know that like, if I wanted to have a little treat and wanted to have like some jelly beans, that doesn't spike my sugar as much as literally like a bowl of pasta does sometimes. Oh, and really? Crazy. Okay. You wouldn't think that. You would think, oh, having that one sugary thing is really going to spike you. But everybody's, everybody is different. And that's the hardest part. You have to be your own doctor, which is really frustrating yeah. and scary, but 100% manageable. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Newspoo is mentioning he keeps a couple of candy bars in the freezer most times just in case he's feeling off mm-hmm. and suspects my blood sugar is fluctuating. Used to keep orange juice but never drank it, which I feel like you you kind of did that to you. You're like, yeah, orange juice. It's one of the oh, well, and Kristen can attest to this for me. Um, for me, it's like getting diagnosed. I I didn't have a sweet tooth before I was diagnosed. And I mean, I was diagnosed later on in life, later than most people are diagnosed with type one, although we've seen a change in that recently. But I was diagnosed when I was 16 years old. So for me, it was like, if I have a low, I want to, I want to use it on something good. <laughs> like, and I, I mean, so that's he wants a, a treat that he I likes, want a treat yeah. that I want. I want which to makes like, sense. Which so, but like, that's what like orange juice is really good for getting your blood sugar up. So that's why a lot of people use it. But it's also like, I don't want orange juice all the time. If I have a low blood sugar, I want to eat a treat that I want, <laughs> which is also like childish and stupid. I get, but. Uh, and someone else in the chat says I was diagnosed with type two, but for some strange reason it was gone two months later, which also can happen. Yeah, it can. Yeah. And there's, and also there was like this huge resurgence of this happening where uh, it was, you know, America got really, really health conscious and uh, like, talking a lot about like childhood obesity and all of those things to the point where like a lot of doctors were saying you're diabetic before people were diabetic because they wanted people to start taking care of themselves. So they put a little bit of the fear, the friend that me and Kristen know, I think there was a little bit of that at one point because they really scared him. His doctor terrified him and basically was like, you're going to lose a foot. And so he freaked out and reversed it super quickly. And they were kind of like, Oh, weird how'd you do that and he's like i did what you said so there's a little bit there can be (laughs) i don't want to use the word propaganda because that's not the right word but Mm. you're there can be a little doctors are different with that. oh yeah and exactly and and that's what's tricky like the the, having you know type one and type two and then you know there is and then there's gestational diabetes which is a whole other thing as well so it's just like there's all sorts of weird things with it but if you want to read more about it you can check out my book (laughs) Diabetes is for lovers. Available at my store in the. I don't think I have that book. Five dollars. It's only five dollars right now, Jeff. Forty pages I don't think I have that. Of comics 40 pages. for five dollars, <throat> and all the profits go to T1 International, which is a fantastic uh, diabetes uh, nonprofit dedicated to insulin for all. There is a whole drama going on outside. My, this, my studio yeah. here this black cat does not want to be picked up its owners it is like going after its owners after they come in to get it oh. i don't know how i don't know how they're gonna get it there's three of them and three of the owners uh this black cat looks like it's practically feral interesting okay uh, th- thank you, Reed. 
I appreciate that. He said thanks. Oh, no problem. <laughs> I said more than that. I said thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, he said thank that. you. I appreciate that. You wanted me to make sure you knew he said oh, more than that. Thank yeah, you, you were like, Jess. I appreciate your appreciation. <laughs> Good. Um, Joe is a winner of a book, and I apologize to everyone that won books for me like a month ago. I'm going to try and get them out this weekend. So, Joe, I apologize. Things have been crazy around here. And you got uh, wild I, cats running around. Wild you got cats stuff going, going on. around in the backyard. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to try and get them out in the mail. I'm going to try and get everybody's books boxed up today and get the messages out to you what shipping is and then try and take them to the post office Monday. So thanks Joe for checking in. I appreciate that. And I'm sorry. Um, birthday messages on the discord. Oh, my discord. Watch it live. Uh, Prose books, general. <laughs> what is this? Who's high pitch? This is Omar Valdesia. Yes, AKA. Okay, wait, this is great. <laughs> this is a high pitch Eric from the Howard Stern show that Omar. <laughs> I think maybe Huff sent it to. <laughs> Huff must have sent it to High Pitch Eric. <laughs> to have him do it. Uh, just a sec. Let me share it in my Discord. This is funny as heck to me, anyway. Okay. Uh, oh, I can make it full screen. There we go. 28 seconds. Who's high pitch? This is Omar Valdesia. Yes, aka Omni Dog. Happy 65th birthday. I'm not going to mention how much better Omni Dog's videos are better than Omar's. And got your comics. Uh, the boss. <laughs> I can translate that. That was definitely Huff that sent that in. <laughs> That's high pitch, Eric. And what he said was, Omni Dog's videos are better than Omar's, and something about goiter comics are great. Huff, that was a masterpiece. I, I don't I don't think anybody got it except you and me, but that was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yes, okay, we know all about now we know about uh, uh everything uh with diabetes. Okay. Jess is like bizarro <laughs> Wilford Brimley. Yeah, he always looks old, right? Or didn't he pass away? So I think that's a I think that's a compliment. Hello, Marcelo. Bananas are also full of sugar. Okay, now we're on the insulin thing. Orange juice is the go-to in hospitals. Okay. Diabetes is for lovers. Okay. When I was um is that cat drama still going on? No, that seems to have cleared out. When I uh, got my first knee replacement, 2016, they allowed me to... Nope, still going on. <laughs> um, when I got my first knee replaced, I was in the hospital three days. They actually said, you can stay as long as you want until the pain is managed. And I said, okay, but three days was enough. And um, my movie buddy came by and dropped gifts off to me and visited me while I was in the hospital. And when I was checking out, the nurse said, well, we took your blood and everything's fine and you can go home, but your blood sugar level is really high. <laughs> she brought me like two giant bags of peanut M&Ms and I had just been, because I was looped <laughs> out of my mind, I had yeah. just been shoving them in my mouth. That's and right. I said, oh yeah, I had a friend drop by. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, diabetes, diabetes, diabetes. Okay, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> Who's high pitch? This is Kelly Clarkson, right? Who's high pitch? That's Omar. What's up, Lionheart? He calls me Uncle Jess. I think that's a good nickname. Jess, happy birthday. Thank you. How was your birthday? It was awesome. Uh, I did not want to celebrate this particular birthday because it's kind of a landmark old person's birthday. But then I started to embrace it because I'm on the right side of the roses. So I said, well, they want to give me gifts. They want to take me to lunch. People like to say happy birthday. I should embrace it. So absolutely, I'm, I embraced it. And I'm, glad you did. I'm still here. So that's that's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> he doesn't prepare and he couldn't i that's so great how he tried to pronounce omar's last name <laughs> okay good um oh wilford brimley did a bunch of diabetes commercials okay uh also i think he looked older than i did at this age well he also said diabetes the way you're saying it so <laughs> diabetes <laughs> yeah diabetes right yeah. Did I just say diabetes? You've been saying diabetes, yeah. <laughs> Which is probably reminding people of that commercial. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Neighborhood cat drama 2024. <laughs> Who's high pitch? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there well, I told them where the gate was. They're still climbing over our spiky low fence oh the cat's right under our uh outdoor furniture <laughs> oh man you um, just need to open the door at this point because cats just run into your house i i this one looks scary though it, it's it's the owners and it was fighting with the owners like not happy fighting not like quit petting me it was like i'm going to kill you type it, thing. it sounds like that's cats very scared that's what it sounds like i think so too but i I don't know. I don't want them getting impaled on the fence. Huh, okay, let's talk comics. How are you doing on your ecstatics read through? Listen, is it a read along at this point when you've finished it? <laughs> how are yeah, how are you doing with your read along? I'm not I'm not doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that's fair. We we put out a nice picture that uh, Mike Allred responded to. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was the very first one where you were pictured hugging it, mm -hmm. and uh, it, Mike Allred responded to it in in a positive way, talking about how much love and passion went in the book, and that he really appreciated that we were highlighting it. Love that. So that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I still haven't put this on my Goodreads, so I need to do that. Um, I I think you'd love it. I think that's a, a... I intend to read it. It's a fun book, and it. I think one of the problems with these super chonky Omnis is these are intimidating. It's hard. I will... Speaking only for myself, I'll say, especially for these Green Arrow ones by Mike Grell, they look intimidating, and this is a biggie. Mm -hmm. I my strategy with big chonkers like this is to attack say that I'm just going to read a little li little bit at a time but keep going enough so that I don't forget what I've read cuz I yeah. don't want to read half of it and then 2 weeks later go oh yeah I got to finish reading that and I've forgotten it all that's the way um, to go it's very lighthearted Although it does have some, um, it definitely has social commentary on it. This is by Darwin Cook, which is really boss. He's a guest inker and guest drawer artist guy. Here's our guy, Dupe. Um, so are you familiar with the concept of what Ecstatics is? Yeah, and I read that Dupe mini like years ago, which I love. Oh, Freddie had me get it. It's pretty cheap. Yeah, it's a good time. Um, it's social commentary in, in the prescient social commentary because it was written back in 2001 ish. And X Force becomes ecstatics as a team. X Force is becomes a reality show. And these guys are always arguing 
they have a manager who's kind of arguing, should you do a personal appearance or should you go uh, save people in a situation that's good for the ecstatics brand? So it's reality show based, but then it deals with their their individual lives. There's um, there's Mr. Sensitive, aka me, uh, Dead Girl, Venus de Milo, uh, Dupe. There's well, and so, some a lot of characters get killed in this book. So. Nobody's safe, but Mr. Sensitive is the, um, oh, you know what? I need to tell you this. So, you know, Mr. Sensitive, and there's not a warning in this book because I think it's older. And uh, there's not a warning because every day Mr. Suicide tries to kill himself with a gun. He plays Russian roulette with a gun. So there's no, like, trigger warning. He's never successful. I just realized that. So just be ready for that. And in case anybody out there is struggling uh, with anything, he, um, you should you should be aware of that too. Uh, that's definitely not lighthearted. That's one of the very heavy moments. He's never successful, but it's an issue that he has uh, that he's trying to deal with. Um. So that's a that's a serious part, um, but otherwise it's fair. Well, I can't say it's all lighthearted because it's pretty deep social commentary by Peter Milligan um, ab about the effects of reality TV on the on the people who are doing it and the people who watch it and who produce it and what the actual point of it is. Um, so it does. It does tackle that. So, I, yeah, I take that back. It's not lighthearted. Um, because there are... You do get... Um, it's written well enough that you get attached to the characters, but they're not always safe. So that can affect you, too. Um, if you... If you, um, if you have a favorite character, not, they won't necessarily make it through the book. But the art is great. The writing's great, and I it has a great Darwin Cook dupe mini in it. Dupe and Wolverine, the pink mink. And this is great. Wolverine and dupe, it's great. I recommend that wholeheartedly. So ecstatics. Did I make you want to read it? or I already wanted to read it. You were just so fast. <laughs> Oh, so fast what? I couldn't let you get a word in edgewise? No, you were already so fast to be like, I'm done. Oh, <laughs> let's, let's have a reading log. I'm done. I, <laughs> I was like, well, whoa, okay. I Yeah, when it comes to these big things, um, like I said, I said I, I, that's what I did with New Mutants, the first volume. That's a big chonkster too. Um, and when they're thin, like maybe Dr. Afra, those are easier to read, so they're not so intimidating. Um, but I also found it engrossing. Like I wanted to find out what happened. There's, you know, all these books have cliffhangers and you need to move on to the next chapter. It was so good. I couldn't stop reading it. I guess that's probably the blurb I want them to put on the back from <laughs> Omnidog. Yeah. I, I just had to keep blowing through it. It was so good. Well, I love that. Yeah. So I think you'll really dig it. And I'm happy to talk about it for the rest of the year. If that's how long it takes you, I don't care. We'll we'll have ecstatic check-ins with you. Okay. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Nope. I, uh... There's there's no pressure, obviously, that I'm going to put on you to finish ecstatics or even start it. It's up to you. Well, I think, as you know, I have not been reading like anything at all. So right. I did finally read two manga last night. And I just felt oh. accomplished. So... What, what manga were those? Uh, a Man and His Cat, volume 9 and 10. I believe I've probably mentioned it. I've certainly mentioned it to people listening, but um, it's so great. And Jess, I would recommend it to you if you read manga, because I do think mm. you enjoy it, especially as a cat guy now. 
<laughs> it's not a cat guy. I still it's have so cats. Of, I, I do have cats of the Louvre still. Yeah, yeah. So one day, one day. What? Uh, what was the other manga? Oh, you read nine oh, and ten. Yeah, this is the next okay. two volumes, which I had one sitting on my shelf forever. Thought I'd already read it. Didn't read it. That's how much I haven't been reading. That was the first thing I read in like weeks. Mm. So that's yeah. where I am in life. <laughs> Okay. That's fair. That's a great Hallmark card. I'm glad you're on the right side of the roses. That was the message that was left by one of my best friends that I grew up with. Um, I'm glad you're on the right side of the roses. Um, we get live commentary on the cat trace. Just a sec. Let me see if they're still out back. Ah, well, I see no people and I see no cats, so I think we're okay. The, I wanted him to go in through the gate. It's a low fence, but it's it's one of those wrought iron spike things. It's it's not designed to keep people out because it's about three feet tall. <laughs> but if you if you step over it and trip, you could actually get hurt. Yeah. So that's what I was that's what I was thinking. I'm seeing that some of your Marvel Omnis have disappeared. Did you start selling them? That sounds directed to you. It does. Absolutely, I have. 100%. If anyone is interested. Uh, you know what? At this point, it's easiest to email Reed. It's Reed Wired. R-E-I-D Wired at gmail.com. He has a whole spreadsheet of what we're selling and how much each thing is. Uh, okay, you want me to type that up as a banner? Sure. It's R E I D W I R E D. That's right. Okay. Create a banner. Read wired at gmail dot com. Add banner. Is this it? That's it. If you want to buy, me. if you want to buy some of Kristen's books, tell him what you're interested in, or ask for that spreadsheet, and he can send that to you. Nice. Uh, I can put this up at various times. I'll also put up this banner. If you want to write me, organic you price buy all books. Jess's books. Yeah. <laughs> Code Omnidog and then 5% off shipping four more books together. Omnidog sit. Uh, we can go back to comments. When are the new overviews coming? I, you know what? I did four of them and I, I suck. And I've forgotten to put them up. I put one up for Rat Queens. And um, yeah, I'm going to be putting more up. They're, they're already they're, they're made, they have thumbnails. I just have forgotten to put them up. So good question, Freddie. Thank you for uh, kicking me in the butt on that. Um, I, I, I needed the kick. <laughs> Freddie and I were going to start reading the Krakoa era together. And I started, I had to reread House of Swords the hat the second half of it so i did that and i was start gonna start reign of x but then the silver age superman came in so i read that and now i'm gonna do a review and overview of it today and release it monday nice. yeah so freddie already finished reign of x that's like 12 books so that's he's wild yeah Pretty slow yeah, down. It's the same situation where you're like, yeah. hi, I finished this. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. That's like, oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Freddie. <laughs> cat, 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 cat. Yeah. Age is just a number. Also your character level. Jess is a level 65 bard, the teller of stories. My strategy with big honkers like this is not reading them. <laughs> Works well for me so far. Here's a we can we can do this. Bar um 
I can get your opinion on this because we talked about it on Omni Bros Wednesday, but but not everybody that watches Omni Bros crosses over into this show. So if you if you heard this on Omni Bros, I'll try and keep it short because um, I think it's interesting. It re it relates to comic books. Bar sent me in the Discord a message where um, somebody was calling me. Uh, it had to do with Jake's, you know, Jake of Brave and the Bold. He um, is in a, a Reddit for omnibus collectors. And he showed off this Perkin Hall, and he called it his March Hall. But it was really like a three month haul. And so this is this is commentary on hauls, except that's not what I responded to. I joined Reddit just to respond to this guy. Let's see. Let me pull up Bar's message to me. What's the Reddit? Is it just omnibus collectors? Yeah, slash omnibus collectors. Um yeah, I'm in that one. Oh, you are? Okay. I can't say I look at it a lot. But I see. Yeah, I joined just to respond to this one guy. Um, okay. <laughs> something, something, something. Uh, oh, apparently, this is Bar. Apparently, you're openly claiming to have a purchasing addiction, LOL. Did you, did you say actually say that? And I said, what the hell? Where is this from? And what's the context? I won't say the guy's name, but this is this is it. There was a whole drama by this one guy because of Jake's big haul. Um, I edited this per. I will refer to him as this person. This person said I edited my comment to include him. Jess admits that he has a serious purchasing addiction, which the original poster refuses to do and hides behind the guise of sponsorship. Here's what got me. Jess is also old and retired and has the cash saved up from retirement. Okay, so of course, I couldn't let that old comment stand. Um, so let me go into... You should send me the link to this book okay, because I want to see it now. Okay, yeah, let me send it to you in the private... Um, I'm like looking and I can't find it. I don't know how... Okay, yeah. Uh, let me pull up bar on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> There's hypothetical... Who's high pitch? This is Kelly Clarkson. Uh, bar, 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 bar. There it is. Okay. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Um. So you're upset yeah. that he called you old? Is that really what we're getting? That's to that's what I went in to complain about. Um. Let's see. Private con. Uh, where's the. Where's private comment? Why am I not? Where's the private thing? Uh, comments, banners. Oh, private chat. There it is. Okay. Let me, there it is. Okay. So. Um, let me go to it. View, visit site. Blank, da, da, da. March Hall got a little crazy. Okay, so let me show you Jake's Hall. Oh, I should do it in the Discord. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Some reason. I, okay, March Hall got a little crazy. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Okay, I'm seeing the post now. Okay. Didn't know Mr. Mr. Beast collects omnibuses. That's fine. Yeah, who who That's is funny. Mr. Beast? He's the biggest YouTuber of all time. Oh, he is. Makes a lot of money. Yeah. Okay, this is Jake's Hall, and as you can see, it's pretty large. Right. So Jake was working off the assumption that I work off of, which is that people like to see halls. During the pandemic crisis, I I spent my <laughs> pandemic checks on books because it made me feel better. And and I 
the minister talked me into showing halls. I was like, you know, people are dying and losing their jobs and they're really sick and stuff. And, and I, you want me to post these halls? And he said, yeah, they sometimes it makes people feel better. They like going on and seeing big halls because it can inspire them to get some of the books or they can, um, they can live vicariously through other people. Um, and he, he, uh, the, the minister was speaking as, um, a viewer, not my friend, a viewer of YouTube saying that I, I really dig halls. I love seeing people's halls and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll post haul videos based on what I get with my pandemic checks. And I said in the videos, well, I've been showing hauls for a while. So the question was, um, didn't know Mr. Beast. Yeah. Um, let me show, let me start. All right. Am I still, uh, sharing this? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, here it is. Half of this sub right now, cringe face. Yeah, just in my opinion, but it's cringe. I'm at the point where I'm trying to get rid of stuff. Don't want a hobby overtaking your life. And Poison Harley is who you might think of was sticking up. This is Barr sticking up for Jake. Um, now, here's where I have... Oh, okay. So this goes on to say, Barr saying, why is it cringe? What's the big deal? People are just being negative for absolutely no reason. This guy says, because it's a sign of a shopping addiction, even well-established channels focus more on content and diving into the actual. So this is just about one thing that Jake has shown. Jake has a hundred other videos of reviews and collecting. It's definitely a spending problem, says this guy. Massive hauls, misspelled. Like this had been coming in for a very long time. People just weren't saying anything and acting like it was cool. Um, and and then whether it is addiction or a problem is not something blah, 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 blah. blah. I think the two sides in this debate come down into... So they're talking about hauls. Mm -hmm. And Jake is like, did I do something wrong? But let me show the replies because that's where I show up. Um, it's cringe to have a massive collection overtake your life in halls like this. Also, dude has 3,000 subs and gets a few 3,000 Ks of vid. Let's not pretend he's PewDiePie, PewDiePie. PewDiePie raking in the dollars here. You should just enjoy your collection not becoming your entire existence. Bar continues to stand up for Jake. Um, she mentions that OPB sends him a lot of books. People shouldn't get less. This is Bar. People shouldn't get less books because there are other people with control issues who are having an imaginary competition to catch up. This guy says OPB, blah, blah, blah. OPB sponsors a ton of comic YouTubers. It's not like a special privilege he has. Then Bart drags me into it. No, that's okay. Have you seen Omar's <laughs> and Omni Dog hauls? Omar also gets a lot of stuff from his viewers, but Omni Dog gets a lot of free stuff from OPB and well. And yeah, his monthly haul is just a big, it's just as big. I really don't understand why y'all care so much. I think it's interesting that an Israeli uses y'all. So I bar that's really cool that you use y'all. I didn't what what's Hebrew for y'all? Okay, here's this is where I get dragged in. You're really comparing a channel with a hundred thousand subs and a Marvel partnership to this one. As far as Omni Dog, he admits he has a spending problem, which is different than the OP. And he edited that in because Bar says, I love how you choose to completely in ignore Omnidog's vault, but I also mentioned LOL, almost like you don't actually want to have a discussion in good faith. Uh, she goes on to talk about me, and he has just as big monthly hauls as Jake does. He's been reading <clears throat> and collecting comics for decades. Thank you, Bar, for having my back. <laughs> I edited my comic to include him. Jess admits that he has a serious purchasing addiction with the OP, blah, 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 blah. 
And here's me. For some reason, I'm not. I'm named Ambitious Emergency. Uh, he's he's. <laughs> I said, and he said somewhere that he's not watching YouTube videos anymore. And I said, I'm sorry, you're not watching my show anymore, Omni Dog's Vault. But please don't call me old. I'm older, a comics veteran, well seasoned reader, '90s comic survivor, very experienced. Silver Age, Silver Fox, just not old. Ha ha ha. And then Barr says, I can't believe you made a Reddit account just to comment on this, which I think it was. I love what you called it, too. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ambitious emergency. I, I, they actually assigned that to me. Oh, OK. <laughs> I thought you would use Omni Dog's vault. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that I did. I don't know enough about Reddit. They just gave me that name when I signed it, when I when I joined um user flair ambitious i don't know and then jake goes in to, to talk about that he insulted me how did i insult him he said he has a spending problem um uh bar goes on to say it's funny because i literally just sent this to Jesse. he's very confused about where you brought this serious purchasing addiction from the person says he's had people on his show who reduce their collections and have tips to reduce spending. It was very useful. That was while he was going insane buying everything. Guilty. I admit that I did that. I stopped watching him and most comic YouTubers, YouTubers so I'm not sure if things have changed. First, hats off to Barr for sticking up for me and Jake. Um, I appreciate that, Barr. So the question is, uh, to the chat, do you like halls or do you think they're cringe, to use young people's terminology? Um, so that's really the question. I, I thought people liked seeing halls. If people think that it's some kind of flex, um, I... I, I can get where that's coming from. If if some people think it's an obnoxious flex. Here's but the thing, I, though. You're asking sorry? Your, here's the thing. You're asking your audience this. No one's going to say they don't like your hauls. Zero people. Um, Jake I'm posted sure, okay. in a random Reddit where you're going to get randos. I'm just <laughs> saying there's the difference. You know what I mean? Like, oh, There are certainly people who think that, who will see that and be like, whoa, that's a crazy haul. You, you know, X, Y, Z reasons that they already said. Yeah. You're on the internet. You're on the open internet where you're not with your audience. Like, this is going to happen. Okay. So. I'm not saying you, it's right or wrong. It's just like, that's what, that's the freaking internet. Okay. You know? Well, what's your opinion about halls? You, you're you always honest with me. I, I don't care. <laughs> I just like, that's what you want to do. I don't typically watch them. Uh -huh. Mostly because I know what I'm going to see. Bunch of superhero like, stuff. For instance, I if I watch my dad's videos, which I do, and I watch his haul, I already know what I'm going to see. It's going to be Marvel Omnibus and other OHCs that I don't care about, quite frankly. So I'm just like, okay, you didn't teach me anything. It's useful to some other people. But, I... it, but your dad's also having fun. He, he's having fun showing his I hauls. didn't say he shouldn't. No, no, no. I'm not, as a viewer, I'm just like, I don't care. Right. And But I'm saying as the guy presenting the haul, it's it's probably fun for your dad. I'm not... Well, because he's spending money. Well, yeah. we we There is a thing that gets released in our brain for spending. Sure. And um, I have a whole different viewpoint on that, specifically with my dad, because he obviously had to create a budget and not go crazy like he had been. So when I see something like Jake's Hall 2, I'm like, well, I can sympathize with the part of people being like, I hope you're not spending more than your means. Because I know, and you've talked about it, you've done whole shows on it. So many people fall down that rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And it's actually pretty sad. So hopefully that's not happening. But we're not going to know that. So if you present it to a bunch of randos on Reddit, people are going to have opinions. Yeah, I, I will say there are only a couple of negative comments. And of course, we focus on the negative. There sure. are a bunch of positive comments yeah. like, bro, that's really cool. I'm glad Generally you nabbed people that. love halls. Those are the videos that are going to get all the views. 
Yeah. You could just look at your videos, my dad's videos, anyone who's doing a haul. Those are the videos that get the views. A hundred percent. Mm hmm. Um, okay. So, and, and we've seen it, especially when you and I were really active in the Facebook omnibus collectors group, we'd see a lot of people early on in collecting where, and I'm, I'm one of them. I, I admit this, and this is where he may have gotten the spending addiction thing. It always goes new person buys a ton, buys a ton, buys a ton. Gets into a financial crisis. It sells it all off. Yeah. Sells a ton. Yeah, sells a ton. Sells a ton. And we see that we saw that repeatedly in the Facebook group. Um, so I I will say I did learn from that. I I do curate my collection regularly, um, and I I do sell books that I don't think I'm going to read. I mean, I made a whole video on probably 2021 where I, I made a, a big stack that went across and I put my head in between. It was all the golden age Batman and Superman that I realized I just wasn't going to read and the Conan books. And I made a video on how people should yeah, wait. I'm not telling people what to do. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I don't tell people what to do, but I said that I was curating my collection, getting rid of things that I wasn't going to read, that I just knew I wasn't going to read. So, I i mean, it's, I do, th it, it's certainly possible to have a spending addiction, and I may have said that, but now I have a budget that mm -hmm. I, I stick to. I do get some books sent to me from OPB to do overviews. That's definitely true. The overviews that I'm doing right now, there's like five or six, those are ones I spent my own money on, but I don't know that that's germane to the discussion. Um, but I'm very careful to only try to get books now that I'm that I know I'm going to read, as opposed to going. And I'm not accusing Jake of this because I know that he genuinely loves these books that he's getting. But he's also a collector, so there's the collector mentality too in this. Um, about books and there's one, okay, so I, I definitely have a budget. I stick to it. Um, and so, and some books I get sent to me, all of that's true. Um, so I sometimes save up books from like three or four months and then I'll say, and then I'll do a haul video. Like here's what I've hauled the past three months, because if you want to see my haul from last week, it was just like a bunch of trades that I got and isn't it's not 12, you know, big fat omnis. It's just a bunch of trades that Freddie talked me into getting um, throwing Freddie. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, I think everyone likes to do a haul video too. Like, you know, that's a lot of the videos that we have pre-recorded on my channel are just, we'll go out of town. We'll pick up some used comics and random stuff and we'll show it off. A lot of times it's because we've never seen these in videos and we want other people to see them, you know? Uh, okay. And I think as a viewer, that's what I like. Some people may not like that. Um, and it's you, all just relative, you know? You like to see books you weren't aware of in right, haul videos? Yeah. Yeah. 100%, yeah. So, like, so, well, this is why I like, this is why I asked you to be a co host in the, in the, from the very beginning. Because you and I have different tastes and different viewpoints. And I wanted you on to give different viewpoints on what you collect. Um, and so you you tend more towards indie and, and manga. You still have some superhero books that you and I talk about. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, that's why I wanted a different opinion on the show. Um, yeah, and that just comes down to taste. But as far as like yeah. generally people liking hauls, I mean, everyone loves a haul. Okay. Everyone being a relative term, you're always going to have those outliers who are going to have some kind of problem with it, you know? There we go. Love hauls. <laughs> and I love Barr for sticking up for me and Jake. Um, here's, okay, here's the, I haven't gotten to any audience questions. Um, and feel free to say if you did, I haven't caught up, so I don't know. 
but you can say to me, I don't dig your halls. That's fair. I don't, I'm just interested in people's opinions. Um, here's the other thing that always gets me in, in that Reddit, there was, um, a, several people that said, what percentage of your collection have you read? So I see that a lot. Um, the people do it to me and I, I say, I've read it, you know, maybe 20% of my collection, but you'd never go into, I I've never seen this where somebody goes into somebody else's house and then you've got a library full of prose books and somebody goes, Oh, how many of these have you read? So oh, I've seen that. You've seen people go in and say to somebody, how many of these people in your that library? To me. 100%. Huh? People have done that to me. Yeah, of course. For your prose books? Yeah. Really? Yeah. They're all I books. think that's an insulting co question. I mean, it's a thing that you have a lot of that someone's curious about. I don't find it insulting. I think it's my collection and I can do whatever I want with it. Well, sure, but if you're having someone in your house, that person's already close to you, right? I mean, theoretically. Yeah. Okay, so that's true. Curious. That's, I mean, that's, I think it's like a friend who'd be like, oh my gosh, like, have you read this one or this one? And it's know. more online. Nobody's come into my house. You and said, said coming into my house. <laughs> well, okay. Um, but I've just, I just haven't ever felt the urge when I go into somebody's house and they've got a, a, a bunch yeah. of prose books. You're not a crazy on the internet. You got to understand that. <laughs> there will always I'm be people like logic this. and I shouldn't. I mean, you know, like, yeah, awesome job for bar sticking up and you jumping in there. But at the same time, that person didn't, they 0% like deserved any part of your time for these comments. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's going to, yeah, happen. that's true. I just didn't want to be called old. That's why I went. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not You'll saying you should have. Even... I'm just like, you know, this person. You'll notice I didn't even stick up for Jake. I just went in there to say, <laughs> Do stop, call <laughs> stop calling me old. I'm older and a survivor in the 90s comics and stuff. I mean, to your point and everyone's point, we're all going to do whatever we want with our money. Like, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, but I'm sure a lot of people have seen people go down wrong paths and maybe they don't all have good faith for these comments, right? But you and I have both seen it. You know, we've seen it yeah. with people we regularly see in those groups where it's like, man, that's a bummer that you went down this rabbit hole. You watched too many haul videos and then you bought too many things. You hold too much yourself. And now you can't pay your car payment or your kid needs food. I mean, we've seen it all, you know? Yeah. And it's like, that's terrible. <laughs> we can almost, we got to a point where we could almost predict what was going to happen yeah, when we saw, yeah. Yeah. When we saw a person post something like that. And that's a big, sad bummer. Like, it's sad. It is sad. And I think we've all went through those phases too, where we're like, oh, we need this right now, right now, right now. I'm currently, I haven't placed an IST order since like November. Okay. I'm off of it. Like, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's coming out. I will do the Kickstarter for Lumber Chains. Like, that's all the plans I got, you know? Yeah. I'm selling books, like I said, but. Yeah. You're in a different it's not, phase. It's not because I need food. No, but you're in a <laughs> yeah. different phase now than yeah. previously. And we all and, go through those, right? And Yeah. And five years from now, you'll be in a different phase than two. We all yeah. go through our different phases. Um, let's see if anybody. Yeah, when was that? Oh, that was for the Hey Bar, Hey Bar. Oh, I'm way behind. Oh, Alley Oop, Alley Oop, Peeps Ahoy. Okay, I've read these. Doing the math, each kind of peeps have a cereal. Happy Saturday to Uncanny Suit. Welcome. Sorry, it's been a while since I. Oh, I'm an hour behind. <laughs> an hour behind. Maybe I should just go down to the bottom. Oh, every time you do that, though, you get lost. I know. <laughs> uh diabetes okay diabetes <laughs> <laughs> every time he's gonna say it he said diabetes damn it uh mickey mouse hypocheric wilford brimley jo okay wait a sec 
Oh, there we are. The Bard, the Teller of Stories. New overviews. Big honkers. Oh, this is important. Mark Russell, Mike Allred, Allred's Batman Dark Age was really good. That's good. Actually, I like honkers, too. Honkers, yeah, and, honkers, honkers. and honkers. Yeah. yeah. Rahul's here an hour ago, at least. Welcome. <laughs> I agree. The Green Arrow Omnis are engaging and become a quick read. Okay, good. Uh, I think this question is for you. Uh, do you plan on reading the new Ito kind of, but not totally manga? Freddie, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a clue. So I there's some you... Ito that's not totally manga. Please explain. Thank you so much. See, like I said, I'm not on the pulse of like most anything at this point. So Here's a question for you. Uh, have you read Breakfast with My Two-Tailed Cat? I read it last night, and oh my gosh, it is wholesome. Um, that's awesome, Kane. I'm glad you liked it. I haven't, but maybe I'll make that a priority tonight. Because I am excited for it. Do you? Oh, do you have it? I do you, have it, yeah. Okay. Um, here is my namesake nephew, who's not really my nephew, Ryan Bragg. Hello, everyone. Just got back from LCS with X Men '97, Jackpot and Black Cat, Floppy. Oh, and Aquaman Andromeda. That's a good book. I did. Uh, I put that on Instagram. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Jake's haul was amazing. Uh, here's <laughs> where it where it is. Name of the thread: James Abel. Okay. You must know James Abel already posted it. I love Reddit. Here's the fabulous bar. I think you should be called the fabulous bar. I love Reddit, but it has some weird people on there who think being negative is their full time job. I, that's I, that's I, the internet. Yeah, that's the internet. I get it. We've seen that pop into your chat, even Jess. You know what I mean? It's rare, but it's happened. Uh, negative comes into our chat. Yeah. Uh, Dan, I'm uh, almost done with X of Swords, and I'm going to start uh, reading Reign of X, but I had to read a couple books for a video I'm going to try and do tonight. I'm going to try and do two videos tonight and put them up like Monday and Tuesday, and that's a long way of saying I should be starting Reign of X tonight or tomorrow. Jake made a new post. Jake even put in a disclaimer on its most recent video in response to a few people complaining about his haul. Here's the address again. People don't like the books he bought. It was the amount, I think. Oh, Freddie took a pause at Inferno, which is after Trials Anthology, mainly because I don't own everything. Catch up! Okay. <laughs> I'm trying. I am trying. Um... Munin loves seeing halls. It gives nice inspiration on what is out there. This hall pick just makes me feel jealous. Spooey is to blame for Jake's buying absolute all-star Batman and Robin. I bought mine the day before he did and pointed him to where he could find it on the cheap. Is that something you really want on the internet? It's there forever now. Somebody's going to screenshot that and see that not only did you buy it, you made Jake buy it. And I read that thing recently for Jordan, the other half of Brave and Boys. Woo, that was bad. <laughs> I've not read it myself. It's a blind buy. Spooey, take it back. Take it back. Hup. Oh, well, Hup. Never mind. I like big halls and I tell no untruth. Oh, yeah, I did out you. Sorry. Okay, they're showing Larry where it is. Is it a big surprise that negativity shows up on the internet? That's been pointed out to me, and I admit my naivety. Um, but I, but I also didn't want to be called old. Is the That's reason fair. I went That's in totally there. fair. Okay, Larry got it. Why did people start arguing with the guy who didn't like halls? It wasn't art. I just didn't like the fact that he called me uh, old. Team Bar, she's unstoppable and correct on this one. It's because of years of using Twitter. Yeah, I don't go to Twitter because I know there's a lot of negativity there. 
I love how Omnidog marvels at the international use of y'all. I it is interesting. I Freddie uses it too. I just I didn't know. I thought it was like an American colloquialism. God, I got dry mouth. I can't even speak. So I just I I think it's interesting. I think even Max uses it from the Netherlands. So I didn't know that it was an international word. Reap, a stop of a bar. Good on you for comments. Why did this person care so much? Okay, you should be in political debates. You're wasted in the police. Social media has taught me that there are always going to be miserable people who wake up each day with a goal of being being just a little more miserable than the last one and blaming everyone else. I try and be the I try and be the positive force that negates the negativity, but I fell for it too. Never imagined Omnidog would make comments on Reddit and Discord threads. I feel like we switched ages. I bet you really are good in debates. Um Freddie, Jess used the Discord more than Omar. Yeah, I do. I go, as soon as I hear the little chime go off that somebody posted something in Discord, I go right into there to, to see what something somebody said. Cringe is having no haul videos. Rodwell, Dan, Dan likes hauls as long as it's X-Men. Okay. They cannot like, oh, Huff said he didn't understand why people didn't like halls. They cannot like it. They just don't have to be blanks about it. I Reap, uh, actually, it's good to have Reap here. He's from uh, the Land of Oz. I skip through haul videos until there's a book I haven't heard of. I can live without them. I've also done that, Reap. People can like or cringe at halls, but people love to voice negative uh, on the internet. I guess I fell for it. Because it got me worried that people wouldn't dig my haul videos. That one voice with the 50 other positive It'll comments. Never happen, Jess. People love your never. videos. I put on your haul videos. <laughs> That's sweet of you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I love haul videos and it makes me find out about books I do not have and eventually might get. Haul videos have to be the most popular videos of physical media channels. 100%. Yeah. I love looking at people's hauls. I love seeing what people are getting. Captain Underpants <laughs> likes gallery editions. This is interesting. I had a persistent commenter sort of attacking me. This is your dad attacking me on my haul videos for several months straight. He kept accusing me of buying all these books and never reading them. Finally got bored, I guess, and probably left. See, that's what I don't... I, I don't get why you can't why i mean it's up to the person to collect and read whatever they want lionheart says just what you or any one of us spend our money on for our hobby it's our business when someone has something negative to say it's a punk behind a computer screen i like your haul videos thank you lionheart I don't know if hauls are a flex, but I think it's intentional for a channel like Jake's to post giant haul videos for attention views. I and, and same with me. I put them out because people seem to like them. I like watching hauls. They rarely sway me, but I love seeing books I won't get. I agree with Barr. I like looking at book hauls in general, much in the same vein as book tours, because it gives me an idea on series I may like to read myself. Nothing wrong with the halls. I know people who go out to restaurants multiple times a week or have 20 streaming subscri subscriptions. I don't. I put money towards books. I don't care if someone doesn't like that. Well, nobody called you old either, Spooey. I don't care for it and don't seem interested in me that I'm not interested. I am interested in any Omnidog videos regardless, though. You're right. This is my cat. <laughs> I'm like, this is what you're gonna see. You know that. Yeah. Well, I I like that my chat is is positive and likes me. 
Lars says, I love 90s comics. It was, oh, is this when I said survive the 90s? It was the decade I bought most titles, not the mainstream series of the big two, but Vertigo, Dark Horse, Caliber, Slave Labor, and Oni, etc. Right. It's your money and your time. Do what you, makes you happy. Why go out of your way to make an arrogant person feel better about being an arrogant person? It's just not okay to claim someone has a spending addiction just because they buy a lot of books. Like Harlan Ellison once said, who the heck wants a library full of books you've only already read? Bart seems like they only started saying that after being attacked for their dislike of Halls, though. Mm, no. He was the guy who, who answered the cringe thing and started going cringy. Oh, here's the one I was talking about. Everything must go. Curate your collection and love it. Thank you, James. 2021. So this truly is like a constant debate and talk conversation, I guess, among us collectors specifically in this niche, right? Yeah. I feel, I feel like it happens over and over and over again because there are people who go to the extreme to their detriment. And, you know, again, you made a lot of videos on the FOMO thing, on the budget thing, uh, which probably helped a lot of people ultimately. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there are people out there who have that. And sometimes it is an addiction. I'm not saying some rando on the internet knows that. Of course they don't. But having the conversation is good for some people to hear. Right. Because there is a problem. Yeah. Yeah, and I had it. Yeah. I, I get mean, my it. dad still has FOMO. And it's a problem. <laughs> like, I'm like, you can calm down. There's going to be red tag sales. <laughs> and he has calmed down to his credit. However... That's it's been a constant conversation, you know? Here's his answer. Since I put myself on a strict budget, I now only do one haul video a month. So is Jess trying to say Freddie Alonzo is the problem? Yeah, I am. Freddie's the problem. <laughs> Freddie has a two-parter. So what is he next imagine on? I know. <laughs> he's going all next imagine on on us. Freddie says, some new people get crazy, then they chill and regulate. It's more rare when people get to the point of, I need to sell to make rent, groceries, etc. The thing is, those people selling for rent fall back into the hole again. See them all the time commenting on other sales soon after. It's a whole cycle again, and again, much more rare. Uh Pity Ma, welcome. I love hauls. It's exciting to see people getting things that they want and are excited to read and enjoy. I enjoy the reviews. They help me determine it's, if it's worth the Omni or the hunt for floppies. And of course, Reap, why can't we all just get along? Let people like what they like as long as it doesn't hurt anyone else. And we wouldn't have had this conversation unless I reacted to one person being negative. There were plenty of positive comments in there. But Jake's human, just like I'm human, and we we want peace and love. We don't want to be criticized, and I, as a YouTuber, I think it's funny for me how I'll get a thousand positive comments, and then I get one negative comment, and that's the one that spins me out, and I have to answer and, and makes me question whether or not I should even exist on YouTube. One negative comment. And that sucks. And I mean, having this conversation though is good, I think for everyone watching and you as well, because you can step back from that and be like, oh yeah, that's ridiculous, right? Like we shouldn't put so much weight into like this one negative voice. At the same time, I feel the need to keep saying because I have had looking at my dad and thinking you may have a problem <laughs> when he was getting so many books. Again, he's better. And I have a close friend too, who I'm not going to name on here, but they also go through that cycle of getting a ton of books, ton, a ton of books, selling them off, getting a ton of books, selling them off. And it is a legitimate issue. And mm. It's sad. And every time I see a haul, I'm like, it's, they're going to they're gonna sell it off again. Like, And I feel for them. So like, I think there is at least an aspect of it that I sympathize, empathize with where I'm like, oh, some people may legitimately see these things and be like, I'm concerned for you. Yeah. 
not that it's their business or whatever, but like I can see that part of it because I have had these close people around me who have had these issues. Right. And it can become a problem, you know? Mm -hmm. And Larry may be going through your dad, may be going through what I sometimes feel. Um, and this is completely self imposed on myself that I feel like I have. I have a YouTube channel. I have I have to get new books to keep viewers interested in my channel. See, and I think that's also a very unhealthy way to look at. I agree. Yeah. I agree. That's I'm not and saying I think you're your right. Dad, you're totally right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying your dad has that. I'm just saying he he could feel no, pressure to get that, new sure. books because we have channels. And and you're right. That's why I brought it up that it's not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because and I'm sure there's tons of that. There's tons of that, especially for smaller channels wanting to like yeah. build up whatever. Um, we don't get a ton of free books from. I don't get a ton of free books from OPB. Mm -hmm. I sometimes get books for overviews, but all most of the time, I would say eighty five percent of of the time of new books coming into my house, it's going to be money I spent for books that I want. Um, so why did I say that? Oh, because we're a smaller channel. And we don't get a ton of books sent to us. Um, Freddie Alonzo. I have family say, you're never going to read all that. <laughs> If you mean upper management coming to me and saying that, you're right. My response is, if I die and the books are still here, you can sell them, donate them to the library, or put a free sign next to the curb, or have an Omar box with his phone number on it so he can come take away the, the dirty books. He doesn't need more books, though. <laughs> no, but he's going to dispose of them so Patty doesn't see them. Yeah. That's the Omar books. Um. Huff and Barr are having a conversation. Uh, Huff, I was part of the conversation. He was being a dick all throughout. He couldn't stop talking crap about Jake, the size of his channel, etc. This person was just ni not nice whatsoever. And Barr was sticking up for Jake and me, too, which I appreciated. I don't know. This doesn't seem outrageous to me to dislike Halls or to think that many books per month is a potential sign of something. Tyler. Hey, Tyler. I had my issues of spending when I first started this hobby in 2020. Now my mindset and budgeting is very similar to Jess and my collecting budgeting is in a much healthier space. That's a nice picture. Now, here's a good point from Devin. Hunting down books that you want and are hard to find is fun. As long as you're staying within your means, buy whatever you want. I will say, especially when books were rare and not reprinted, I had a ton of fun going out and finding out-of-print books for cover price or less. And I hooked up back in 2016 till 2021 when I stopped being an admin in that Facebook group. I found probably 250 books for people that were rare and I would find them for cover price and I would, I would get... I would get them for them. And that was fun. I like the collecting. I am a collector. I will say that. I I love collecting um, and going out and, and finding hard to find books. I mean, that's still like my favorite part, even if it's something that's not necessarily hard to find. But, you know, we'll go out of town. We'll hit up a half price books. And if we even find like some, you know, Fantagraphics books that we can't get, uh, at any of the big sites for 50% off. And we see them there for 50% off, you know, it's an amazing find and we're like, this is the best. So still having like that kind of mindset, it's rarer now with like really rare books, you know? Yeah. But you could still find them in the wild and that's the best part, absolutely. That really is fun, yeah. That's how I found Ecstatics. It was out of print at the time because obviously it's still out of print. And yeah. it was just in some random comic shop. And I was like, oh, I have to get this. And it Clearly, wasn't... I read it very fast. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what Tyler said is important too. 
to like have people, there are people, clearly people in your audience who have had these issues before. And thankfully he's in a healthier mind space, which I love. What um, this, this comment? Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. That I being think said, it's I think more Jake... common than it's talked about because money is always such a, like a thing people don't want to talk about anyway. Um, so even if it was unhealthy, here already criticize him. Okay. I, I have to stop in half an hour. Uh, yes. Because I need to do the collected editions video for this month. Um, let's see. Is 4.15 okay? Or this is Chris, comic releases guy. Does it need to be four? Because I want to keep doing, I love talking to you, so I want to keep going. Psychomantis, hello everyone. I'm addicted collecting artist edition books. And those are big honkers, right? Like those big are, honkers. yeah. yeah. And they're nice. Can we vote for a haul? I want Jess to do a dark hawk haul. I don't even. Are there any? Uh, okay, wait. He needs to eat lunch. Five is fine. Okay. Uh, wait. Why is Gary Redman LOLing at New Spooey? Oh, because they're having a. Uh, they're talking to each other. Okay. Okay. Good. Now we can do whatever we want. Uh, Reddit, in addition, in addition, some rando on Reddit shouldn't armchair diagnose disorders. That's the job of a professional. But people on the internet love to do that. Yeah, and it's fair for Kristen to point out that I was reacting to a rando on the internet. Who cares um, about that guy? Yeah. Yeah, and I fall victim to it too much. Also, you know, those kind of people love when people reply to them. They're living for that. He, you know, he did. Yeah, I agree with that. But he never responded to what I said about wanting to be called older. And not <laughs> old. <laughs> uh, wait, where's Freddie? Freddie, Freddie, Freddie. Oh, I'm probably helping, this is me, helping him avoid upgrading by buying more. And then James says, he's still going to upgrade. You know he will. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. You've been pretty good about not doing that. About not upgrading? Yeah, from what I've seen. I've been selectively upgrading. I am I sent my Justice League Dark Rebirth books to Geo. No, 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 wait. I'm going to send those to somebody else. What did I send to Geo? Oh, my death metal books. Um, I gifted them to Geo and got the Omni. Uh, and I'm going to upgrade uh, Justice, League, Justice League Dark Rebirth. I have those books, and I, but I'm not sure I have all of them. I'm upgrading that, but some I'm not. I'm going to. I'm not going to upgrade. Like, I'm not sure I need to upgrade to Moon Knight by Jed McKay. I love those books, but I think the trades are probably fine for me. Um, There were some other Marvel... Well, DC's been putting out a lot uh, recently since you... Since you don't... Do you, do you know that at all? Do you, uh, you probably don't even care. Or do you care? DC solicits, they've been putting out a lot of Omni announcements and collected edition announcements. No, but that's cool. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Fair. That's fair. I, you know, I read some DC stuff. I read yeah. more than I think people assume I do. Mm -hmm. Like, you still haven't read Peacemaker, have you? You got to do it. Oh, by uh, Kyle. Yeah. I, it's so yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. That's so good. Um, I do have Marvel Unleashed near the top of the read stack. Do it. The, the the delusional pile of shame. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I need to get Peacemaker. Okay. 
You'll love it. I'm sure I will. Yeah, it's really good, huh? I love so Peacemaker, good. and to have him on it. Did he say he was restricted in any way, like he was on Marvel Unleashed? Well, I'm sure he was because it's DC. I feel like you have restrictions on all big two properties, but his original idea for Marvel Unleashed was quite different. So I, I didn't hear that story. If that if there is a story with that, per okay. Peacemaker. Uh, this is the, oh, so I pros, also, sorry, go ahead. I also feel the need. Um, Rock Candy Mountain is having a two-in-one big honkin' trade with the whole series coming out. So that's exciting. That is exciting. That's the first Kyle Starks book I read. Mm -hmm. I, peace and love to him, but I'm not going to upgrade. Yeah, I'm not either. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool for anyone who doesn't have it already. They can get the whole thing in one. That's nice. Yeah. Um, so Huff is saying that you hear people saying that all the time about pros question. I get asked a lot is, have you read them all? Then I say, yes, apart from those on that coffee table, then they look at me funny. Who looks at you funny, Elon? You're Elon. I mean, I think about like the booktube internet in general, you know, there's, there's a vastly more popular sphere of YouTube that is pros books. And you will see the same kind of thing. You know, there are shells behind everybody and they're all pros. And I mean, half those comments would be like, what have you read? Like, what have these, like, how much have you, I mean, it's it, really, okay. Do it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a kind of a negative flex by those people then. Right. They're just trying to bully people like, oh, nice collection, but how much have you read? I think, I mean, Maybe I'm giving people the benefit of the doubt, but I think sometimes people are just curious. If I saw a whole wall of pros, I'd be like, cool. And I would be curious how much you have read, because if you've read all of it, that's very impressive. And if you, you know what I mean? And if you've yeah. read like 50%, that's more relatable. Right. I think there is a curiosity part mm. of it that may just okay. come off negatively sometimes. And there's, yeah. of course, negative people. I'm not saying there's not both. But I think the question itself is just a curiosity. I feel like we all have. You know, I listen, my favorite book podcast, they talk about the percentage of their collection they've read. At the end of every year, they have statistics because people love statistics. People are mm. like, yes, I want to know how much you've read. So they'll be like, okay, I brought in this many new books this year. And out of those, I've read this percentage of them. Like, it is interesting from an analytical perspective, if you would like that kind of thing. I think you, you make a good point. It if it's a legit curiosity, but I think people mean it. I think the majority of those questions are from some of them. Absolutely. are negative. If that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. A hundred percent. They're trying to drag the person, but as far as me and like your collection, I'm like, Oh yeah, you say tw you've read 20%. I would also be curious how much you've read. Just curious. I'm yeah. not going to judge you either way, but I would be curious if I had the percentage of mine, I'd be curious, but I haven't kept track of that. I don't know. You know, um, but I also love tracking books. That's why we love Goodreads, right? Yeah. It's and a I'm... trash app, and I love it. <laughs> Both things are true. Um, yeah, and I, I have to I have to go. I have like six books I ha I've read that I haven't put up there. Um, Rising Phoenix. I love haul videos. The only thing better that beats them is Kristen's love for Superman <laughs> or her rant videos. That, yeah. No, that's legit. That's still the best video on the internet. I, that... you know, I thought about just coming back because I haven't done a pre-recorded video in quite a while. Reader and I are working on something, but who knows when that'll come out. Um, but I've thought about like, because I read a lot of books I hate sometimes. <laughs> Maybe Pro, not a lot. It's prose relative. and graphic novel um, or more less, graphic novel? Less prose, more graphic novels. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have a lot of opinions. I don't know if you know that about me. Um, oh, but... no. Really? <laughs> And that's why we're both here, right? We both do. Yeah. But you know, I love ranting about a book I hate. <laughs> so, <laughs> which you can see on the reading update with me and Mary uh, that happens most weeks. It hasn't happened in a bit. Uh, but I, I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to tell you what I think. Uh, but I've thought about like exclusively putting those up. Like if there's something that's so bad, I'm like, forget this book. Like, rant, rant, people. A rant review. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting that I don't consider those negative. I consider those 
funny. <laughs> but I well, wonder. And like I've said, like if I see a negative review for something, I'm more interested in reading it. Because you want to read it. Yes, because I'm like, I want to know if I hate it too. <laughs> or, or you know, everyone has a different opinion. Like, yeah. you love stuff that I probably didn't. Superman, right? Like, it's all relative. So yeah. when I see a negative review, I'm like, I, I want to go read it now. You know, we should have, the three of us, you, me, and the minister, should have gone on right after we read that book and done, uh, I mean, because we serendipitously just all three read it that i feel like it was a sunday and we just randomly read it all three of us we should have made a rant video on that book while it was fresh in our minds you're so right it would have been great it would have been great <laughs> because we all texted each other right at, <laughs> at the same <laughs> moment saying wtf yeah what was that book yeah um Maybe that person didn't deserve the attention, but Jake was getting ganged on, so I felt the need to comment. Thankfully, since then, the comments are mostly positive. I think I have read 60 to 70 percent of my collection, but then I spent 50 years doing it. I've spent 50 years doing it, and I've only read 20 percent, so good for you. That's awesome. And that's great. Yeah. Well, and then there are people who are literally like, I buy a book and then I read it right then. And that's yeah. impressive to me. Like that's, that's beautiful. I've done that a few times. And when it has happened, I'm like, whoa, who am I? <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, I did it about a book that you would, would absolutely not read, but everybody's expecting me to put up a review about it. And that's Superman Silver Age Omnibus number one. Mm. I, there's no circumstance under earth unless it was a direct threat to your life. Would I recommend that you read the book? <laughs> threat to your life. <laughs> That's the only circumstance or, or it a doesn't loved like one. torture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it'd be like if your dad was kidnapped and they said, you have to read Superman silver age one. I actually, I'm sorry. I put that out in the universe. I take it back. <laughs> I don't want anyone to hurt Larry. Also, just what kind of weird villain is that? <laughs> like, I know, is that, right? Is it Clark oh. Kent? Did he take my dad and he just really needs me to read this? Yeah, that's... Oh, actually, that's a good idea. What? Who's book reader? He's the guy that takes, kidnaps somebody and makes them read books they don't want to read. Trash book reader. That's Batman 66 style villain. <laughs> Uh, Tyler says, completely agree, Omnicat. People engaging in bad faith arguments is a frustrating and annoying phenomenon. Having new things to read is great. How boring would life be if you were never seeking more experiences? Why would it even be worth living if everything important already happened in the past? Who knows if Jake even doesn't appreciate the attention of the controversy? I checked with him. I <laughs> checked with him. I checked I with him. I yeah, actually, that's a fair question, Huff, because I checked with him uh, after I went in there, and then I checked with him. Uh, he was in the Omni Bros discussion when Lou and I were discussing uh, on Wednesday this whole thing. Um, he was in there, and um, and I told him I was going to do it on this show, and he was okay with it because he just innocently put up a haul, and then was like, "Whoa, what's happening here?" Uh, it, it could have been a one month haul. I, I don't, I, 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 I actually, if I said it wasn't, I, I apologize. Um, I, I think I, sometimes I do that. I'll, I'll save up books and just say big haul. So if that was a March haul, I'm, I think I'm sure Jake, um, because I know he's active on trying to get every, his collecting goal is to get every absolute ever. So, God, I have super dry mouth. You know, soda makes that worse. Yeah, I'll get water. I think we have water downstairs. Um, my comments defending him were even downvoted like crazy at the beginning, but then the more sensible people came. Okay, I understand a little bit about downvoting, but I don't, I didn't look at what happened to mine. Um, 
<laughs> Are we still riding at dawn for Jake? I may have a fractured ankle. Do you have a frank fra a Do you have a fractured ankle? Hayden, how'd you, frac how'd you fracture your ankle? Tell me about it, Hayden. Um, I also have an ankle injury currently. Do you? I do. Yesterday, um, I'm hoping it's just very badly sprained. I can oh walk on it. It just really hurts. Oh, yeah. It's like huge though. It's like a, I got a goose egg on my ankle. Uh, oh, it's a big swelling. Yeah. Have, have you been, what is it? Icing it? Is that yeah. uh, what you're supposed to be doing? Yeah. And I have like a compression sock on it. Oh, okay. Like Good. a brace kind of thing. And Hayden's got a new profile pic. That looks like a Jenny for son, uh, Harley cover, which looks awesome to me. Hayden speedy recovery. That sounds awful. Yeah, that's terrible. I already hate my stupid angle, so. <laughs> uh, Chris wants more Sheets books. Oh, if only. We um, It's done, we but should, if only. We need to uh, get her on the air and, and interview her. <sighs> yeah, we shall be. We're going to be besties, right? Like. <laughs> she's, she's yeah, so, she's, she's buddies with you on IG, right? Yeah, she's so great. Okay, I think that we definitely need to. Um, she's so such a. Those books are so great. I haven't read the third yeah. one. I know you already read it. You read it as soon as it came in, right? Yeah. Well, actually, I, I read. A, I had an early copy, so I read. Oh, oh that's <laughs> right. Big deal. That's a big deal. <laughs> you had a reader copy sent yeah. to you early. What the hell? No. I I do want to go Keep back up. through them all though like and actually read them all in order because i did just read uh lights without anything else mm. so having that refresher i think will be even better uh, and i loved it i mean i think it was a great wrap up to the whole thing it was beautifully done it's like thicker than the other two as well so like you get even more story and it wraps up so nicely if anyone doesn't have those books by the way there's a box set coming out in october we're talking so. about sheets, delicates, and lights. And lights, yeah. By Brenna um, Thumler. And there's a sheets deluxe edition that I have. Uh, a delicates de deluxe edition recently came out, which I need to get. So, so you're you are going to upgrade to the deluxe. What are you going to do with the old one? Just take it to Second and Charles. I guess so. Um, I'm like looking at them now. I have to keep my like I have the paperback of sheets still with the hardcover because. That one signed. Uh, Mary, you... Mary, oh, got, Mary got it for me at Comic Con like years ago. She's loving mm. it, yeah, and sent it to me and got it signed for me. Uh, so I can't get rid of that. So no. now I'm kind of well. If I have one paperback, do I keep all the paperbacks? Like, maybe I don't you know. need to get all the paperbacks signed, oh. and then just have the hardcovers right there next to them. Okay, I kind of love that. Yeah, I, I solved that. that problem for you. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> nice. And I'm not one to typically upgrade, but like that's one of my favorite series of all time. I have to. Yeah, I I am completely with you. Um, in other news, today is Batman's 85th anniversary. Oh, he's an old guy. Detective Comics came out March 27, March 30th, 1939. He's got some years on you. That's the old guy. <laughs> he does. <laughs> uh, hi, AS. Hey. Uh, Freddie Alonzo, you get Jess to buy trades and Omar get him to buy Omnibus. Mm, are you sure? I mean, Freddie does get me to buy these trades, but they're ones I want. New Ito is mostly prose and has a few manga pages from what Riley and Geo shared. I'll read that. I mean, I love his stuff. That's interesting, though. The Ito is a collab, collab where he's providing some art and manga pieces with prose shorts mm -hmm. by this gentleman. Okay, that sounds cool. Hey, YP. Hope people in NYC got a free copy of Detective Comics number 27 today. Are, where are they giving it away? The streets of New York? <laughs> are they just out randomly? That's pretty cool. Passing out copies in the city? Jamie's here to celebrate the Superman triangle years coming to oversized format. I am with you, Jamie. I am very excited about that. Yeah, me too. I'm the half of the show that's excited about I'm it. I'm so excited about that. Okay, she's totally lying. Don't even listen to her. <laughs> I'm Duke happy and I are way excited. I'm happy for you. 
Thank you. I, I'm not sure I understand this one. Do you understand that? No. Mary Downing Han ad adaptations. I don't know who that is. Chris, you flummoxed us. <laughs> you you get a no prize. We don't tell tell us w about those. Jess, you have. Oh. Jess, you've always been an amazing beacon for positivity in this community, especially when compared to certain other creators that I will not name drag here. Tyler, you should name them and drag them here. <laughs> Tyler, we want to know. <laughs> I always appreciated you in very fine condition for that. Tyler, message us later. <laughs> this Omni Dog Discord is a great community. It is a great community. I, I love that Discord. I wish people were even more active in it. I would love to just spend my day talking to people on the Discord. Uh, what I prefer even more than halls, oh, is room tours or collection tours. That's why I loved your X-Men shelf video. Oh, good, thanks. I did that after Peter and um, Freddie organized that part of it. Booster Green loves halls. Uh, yeah, that is the point of every YouTube video to get. Views. I would disagree yeah. with that personally. You will disagree with that. I would, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's hear for your thoughts personally. on that. Go, go for it. Well, I mean, one, if you look at my subscriber count, it's like I'm not sitting here trying real hard, but <laughs> I say that because I'm just doing it for fun, completely for fun. If the video gets 50 views, I don't care. That's fine. 50 people liked it. That's pretty cool to me. So yeah. That's not my point. Yeah. Personally, I understand some people do it for money and that's their point, but I do think you can tell a difference too when when you watch that kind of stuff. I agree with that. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about and who you're talking about. Brett, he's the one that gave me this boss Judge Dread brag shield. How's it going, Brett? People who make it their business to others how they should spend their money are the worst. I agree that you should have spent money on this for me. This was a great gift. I get lots of great gifts. I'm really blessed. I really am blessed with really great viewers. I'm sure OmniDog enjoys eating turnips. Do you? Um, Turnips are fine. I like them in stew. I liked buying them for Animal Crossing. That was great. Mm. Every Sunday. Yeah. Let's go to the every, yeah. Every Sunday I was on my <laughs> I was on my <laughs> uh switch buying turnips. Ah, there's lots of haulers. I like them if they're unique books or well curated. That's a good point. Um that's why Kristen has I, Kristen's halls are different than mine, and that's why we cover the bases. Um, and I will, it's not a haul, I guess it's a haul, but it's going to be more of a review when I read all the books that uh Cycle sent me, all the super indie books. That'll be fun. R says, at the end of the day, everyone should spend their money however they like. The sub is literally called Omnibus Collectors, so there's no need to act all high and mighty. And let me just add, y'all. FOMO is a real thing. This is why I wish list everything. I will eventually forget about it. I will say that I have a new strategy that I've been doing for vinyl and books is that I will put them in my basket because I'm all, let's, let's just say there's like three pieces of vinyl that come out and I'm excited about them. I put them in my basket and then sleep on it for a couple days. And then I go back to the basket. So that's actually been saving me a lot of money. Then I go, do I really want this? 
Mm, I try and let the FOMO kind of seep out of me. And I'm doing that with books, too. I think that's a good strategy. That's something I do with, like, every website. <laughs> I will, let's say I'm, like, wanting some new clothes for some reason. I got Old Navy. And I'm, like, let's put this in the cart. This, blah, blah. And then it's too many things in the cart. I'm, like, okay, I'm going to think about this for, like, a day. And then I'll go back and I'll be, like, I don't need half this. <laughs> like, you know. And that's, it still does get out some of that, like, shopping kind of dopamine or something uh -huh. where you at least put it in your car and yeah you don't physically have it that's also why i like to utilize my library i will go there and get a library haul that i pay zero dollars for mm. i'm not roped into reading all these necessarily right and so often i'm just i'm a hundred percent basing stuff on the cover i don't know what these books are grabbing i mean sometimes i know of course but I'm grabbing random stuff. And then if I start it and I hate it, well, I didn't pay money for this. I'm fine. And I'm not going to finish it, you know? And that's also gets out that whole, like, I need something physically to take home. Yeah. <laughs> because I want to buy books, but I should not be buying books. So let me go do that. And I feel like that also can be helpful. I, um, in, in, uh, my discord, I can't think of who it is. It might be Chris Brogan. I, I'd have to, I'd have to go in and search some somebody in my discord has the most awesome library. I don't have that here in Fairfax County. The library system here is terrible for graphic novels, but let me see who this person is. I, um, they get, they bring home a stack each week of the most interesting graphic novels every week. This is stuff that I have never heard of, never seen. And it's actually, those are interesting halls, those library halls this person gets. First of all, it's amazing that his library is so cool like that. And then second of all, he gets them, reads them, and takes them back for free. Let me see if I can figure out who that is. That That's great. Would be uh, I have a great library for graphic novels, too. But I will say for anyone who just doesn't understand how libraries work, because a lot of people don't, you can request them to buy anything. And I've done it plenty of times and they buy it most times because they know if they get a request for something, then one, someone's checking it out. So oh. they, they have a whole budget for that stuff, right? So someone's checking it out. So we're going to guarantee it's going to have at least one rotation. And that's good on the library. So it's more often than not, librarians will say, we buy those. If someone's asking for something and we don't have it already, we're going to get it. So if you don't have an abundance of graphic novels at your library, but there's something you really have been wanting to read, request them to buy it. Because more likely than not, they're going to buy it. It is Chris Brogan. Chris is awesome. Yeah, he, he reads the cool stuff. I hope this is, Yeah. It's amazing that his library has this stuff. I don't even recognize these books. And that his hall, his library hall, I like because it, it lets me know what books are out there. And I mean, he he doesn't review them, but he just sometimes he'll just say, yeah, I like this or yeah. But Chris, your library is amazing. I think for uh, people who don't actually visit their libraries, like they should check out the graphic novel section if you haven't, because I think a lot of people will be surprised how many, especially now, have stocked that section mm. with really cool, interesting stuff. I would I couldn't even get Hoopla through Fairfax County. I had to go to Prince William County and open an account. It's too far for me to go do a library haul because I bet they have cool graphic novels. Although I'm taking my movie buddy. We're going to go to the Alamo uh, to see something. I don't know what we're going to see yet, but I have so much credit at second and Charles that I'm going to just let her buy whatever she wants. I there's that's hardly fun. any that's yeah. There's hardly anything at second and Charles right now that I actively want or that I really want. So I'd rather have her get something with that credit. You know, today they're doing their penny a page sale. So what is that? That's uh, any used books. You can get up to five and you pay. They There's qualifications. They have to have page numbers. 
because you're going to look at that page number where the cashier is and you pay a penny per page. So if it's 200 pages, the very cheap. It's a $200 book. Penny a page. <laughs> it's a $2,000 book. <laughs> What's no, happening to your brain? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Gary says Hoopla is a godsend. Hoopla's the best. Mixing in digital is the only way to go for most people. I think buying and selling is part of collecting, unless it's to make rent. It seems healthy to not want to keep everything. But we we'll, have problems with that too. Uh, with what? With keeping everything. Right. <laughs> I won't name names. We all know. Do you want to put it in the private chat? Sure. Is it me? No. <laughs> William Lee says, I feel like people just need to have priorities. Only use disposable income for this hobby. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which I could probably say, but anyway, <laughs> that's for you. That's, that's a lot for you. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, whoops, that took me to the bottom of the page. Oh, okay. Where are the excess halls sold off? Mine is more wanting to get omnis of books I always wanted to complete in singles but never could. So the omnis are my second chance. And that's why Jess is going to give away. No, dude, I spent my own money on that. <laughs> I know you want it. If they send me a copy accidentally for free, then I'm, I'm happy to give it to you. My big quantity hauls are older, cheap books, secondhand, remaindered, or sales. I pick up some new, but nowhere near as much as I might like to as it comes out. There's stacks, but I'm always reading. Partworks, I love that. That's exactly what I do. If we're going out of town, we're getting used books. They're always on sale. Often we're just like, what is this? This looks like something we'll like. And I think that's the fun of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's fun, hunting and finding. I also sell a lot of books and make my money back that way, so I never see it as a financial burden. I love anyone who can do that. Yeah. I'm one of those people who can do that, but so many people won't do that. And I don't understand. Uh, my best move was stopping pre orders on DCBS. And let me just say out loud if you buy anything from DC Direct or whatever they're calling it, like a t shirt or an album or anything, and you, this is why you should always wish list at DC, the DC shop, like figures, t-shirts, vinyl, shoes. There is no canceling your order. The next day, if you get buyer's remorse, too bad. And yes, I learned that the hard way. Fortunately, it wasn't a lot. It was just a t-shirt for 25 bucks. Um, that I immediately put on sale and got some of my money back, but don't buy direct from DC unless you, I mean, put it in your wish list, your cart, and then go back to it because there's no canceling there. Uh, I sold my collection to help save for a house deposit. It was two bookshelves of X Men. I've started collecting again, and it's so hard to get some of what I had. But I'm putting in the butt. I love my new collection. Plus, you got a house deposit. That sounds actually pretty smart to me. It's huge, yeah. I also love the hunt for books I need for cheap. That's no, sweet. this is a 10 minute warning. Peace and love, peace and love. <laughs> 10 minute warning. No. <laughs> Although I will say, next week you're going to see Omnicat again. On Batter Days with Mary M. and Raid Chancellor. <laughs> yep. That's going to we'll be We'll have fun. a whole thing. Be awesome. Reba's very excited to be invited. So. Good, good. I think Reed's great. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun. 
and we'll figure out the topic a minute beforehand. Yeah, be we, great. we never even, nobody even asked what the mystery topic was. So, <laughs> so we'll never know. It's too bad. Yeah. Rahul, I'm sorry. There will not, this is a good question. There will not be a live edition uh, because this was a birthday weekend, my birthday on Thursday, and then junior management's birthday is tomorrow. Um, there was just too much to do. Peace and love, peace and love. I have too much to do. Um, so we will be putting out a recorded one. That's what I'm going to do at five my time with uh, Webhead, but we won't be doing it live. Next month, yes. No, I can't. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that you guys want one, but I cannot. I apologize, Booster. Yeah, I just answered that because that that'll be another three hour video and upper management has me do things. Uh, dread it. That's funny. <laughs> dread it. I have randos on the Internet attacking me as we speak with wildly inaccurate accusations. LOL. What have you put up? The people are attacking you. And why aren't you ordering me food right now and having them place it right in front of the screen door so I can't get it? And no, I don't want food. I'm just kidding, Cycle. Or huff. Chris, the library hauler. I did go buying crazy during the pandemic and honestly am kind of mad that I did. I have sold most of the books that I bought during that time without reading them. I wish I saved that money instead. Totally get it. I'm sure that's a, a regret for a lot of people. Yeah. Bunk says, just finished up a kid's birthday. Did we ever get to the secret topic today? He's the first one to ask. First one to ask. What time was that? 314. 314? Am I really that far behind? I felt like I was caught up. Holy smoke. Omar has a box for dirty books he wants to hide. So that is where those 13 copies of Trouble ended up. Uh, I don't know. Have you scheduled, oh, speaking of FOMO, when you're doing your FOMO X-Men episode with Crushing and Peter, I can't wait for that episode. Um, I haven't scheduled yet. it yet. Uh, Freddie and I are, uh, Freddie is now part of this. Um, the the issue is the time difference with Peter crushing crisis and the fact that he has a very busy life. Um, so we have to schedule it. I think a Tuesday again at 7 PM would work. I uh, will send him a message and see if we can get it scheduled. That's going to be the FOMO episode where he tells me everything I'm missing and thinks I'm going to go right out and buy it. Those episodes are so fun. Like, I don't care even a little bit about getting any of those books, really. But it's just so fun to watch. And Peter's so good. He's he's great. That's right. I've seen you in the chat regularly yeah. for those That's two fun. episodes. Yeah, it is fun. Peter's uh, amazing. I, I love that guy. And, of course, I love Freddie. Spooey says, I recently cut back on buying books overall due to limited spacing now that the pandemic destroyed the home ownership market here. A lot of stuff I read, and then I either sell or give away. Totally get that. Yeah, looking forward to the Rick Vetch Vetch Swamp Thing trades. Jess was slandering me unfairly early on, earlier on this very show. Oh, I'm part of the problem? Wait, slander? Yeah, it is slander. Okay. Uh, what? <laughs> what's, what's happening here? It's still a flex. Look at how much I buy. I can't even read it all. Okay. It's, it's Apparently, weird. yeah, there's a way to add. That, that was actually the question I was asking in the very beginning two hours ago. Apparently, there's a way to ask DC to ask Vetch to finish Swamp Thing 88. I used to get comments, this is Marcelo. I used to get those comments when people saw my science technical books library. They can't process people putting in time to study. Well, people and as 
as we know, like most people don't even read a few books a year or a book a year. The majority of people don't. So yeah. anyone seeing all of this behind both of us, who is an average rando on the internet, I mean, mind blown. Yeah. I never thought about that. We're such a niche of, we're like readers and the majority. Yeah, even just generally readers. Like, yeah. And so we're a small part of the, we're a small part. I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, this is speaking to exactly what you just said. One of the most depressing things I know is being invited into somebody's house and there are no books on the shelves. Yeah, and I'm sure we've all experienced exactly this. Like Reed and I have been looking at houses lately because we're trying to find something. But as as mentioned, the market's like garbage. <laughs> but so often, like the last one we looked at, they had like a vast library and we were like whoa and like instead of looking at the house we were like what's on their shelves which is funny um but like that's the first one out of how many we've looked at now like a lot where i'd seen a book just a book wow that act i don't know if i'm shocked dismayed dis disappointed or all of those i had never thought about that Yeah, some people think reading's boring. Uh, uh, Obviously, we don't understand that, but... What the heck? People associate it with school. People, you know, have bad memories of having been forced to read something they didn't want to. Oh, well, you know. I yeah, I remember in college that I don't think I did any free reading. It was always textbooks. I don't trust, here's Rick Ray, I don't trust positive reviews as much as I trust a three-star or lower review on Goodreads. That's fair, actually. Rick, I totally get that. And the issue I have with Goodreads, I think is probably what a lot of people do, is just five, the five-star system just isn't, it's really not fair, I think, I'm to a person. I'm fine. Sorry? I'm all fine. It? It, yeah. I feel like I'm it's fine. 10 stars, but you're fine. Well, I mean, your variation will be similar, you know, like a five star read of a 10 star scale is three. But I, but I feel like if I, I feel like if I could give a book a seven, uh, that says, okay, it, it was decent and worth a read. But then on Goodreads, if I give it a three, I'll, I, I have to put something in the column, in the comments section saying, this was really more of a three and a half. I thought it was pretty good and I will read it, reread it again. It just wasn't as good as a four. It was, and, but it, I feel like threes and below are books that, I don't know. I guess a three is okay, but on a bigger scale, I could give it a seven and say, I feel like that gives me more flexibility. If you're at a seven, I would round up to a four. But four is almost a five. <laughs> you know what I mean? A, I think an, I, well, an and I've, I've used Goodreads for years and years, so I'm yeah. used to that scale. I like that scale. Okay. Um, I think most people want half stars is the thing. So they want the half yeah. star within the five star scale. Will I, they ever do it? Probably not because that, that they don't care even a little bit about the whole website. It's, it has not been updated in forever and it's trash, but, <laughs> but I understand. So yeah, a lot of people will put in the comments like 3.5 or whatever. I don't care enough. I'm like, this is a three, like I'm good. Like, But I understand there's not quite the variation that some people want. And again, this feels it's a like a good website. This feels like it could be a good rant next week about how trash Goodreads is. It is the worst, and I will never stop using it. <laughs> okay, don't say anything else because we may be okay. able to wind you up next week. And oh, talk you will. It. You. <laughs> <laughs> we always have thoughts on Goodreads. Uh, I, but I also want to see if they're actually being critical and not saying vague stuff like bad writing, bad art. Yeah, there's a lot of garbage reviews out there too. Oh, okay. I don't read anybody else's reviews because I don't want to be influenced by them. 
Um, something, 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 something felt good cutting down my backlog. Yeah, that is good. Always good. So it's just, no. So it's just saying Jake does appreciate the attention then. He checked with him if it was okay to discuss on multiple shows and he was okay with it. Isn't this marketing 101? The most milk toast drama ever. <laughs> milk toast. It was caused by very glamorously slipping. Oh, that must be your wow. oh your ankle, Hayden. Okay, we're back on ankle. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, can we go back real quick to AS's comment? Um, they're saying, I have a friend who went through the impress depressing exercise of calculating how many books he could read in his remaining lifespan. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, here it is. On the other hand, helps prioritize. Is your friend my father? Is that? Are you friends <laughs> with my dad? Me? Because literally my dad has done this. <laughs> and I'm like, you have a problem. So he talks about it a lot. Oh, He's done okay. the math. He's done the math. Yeah, I don't want to do the math. No, it's not worth it. Also, you don't know how long you're going to live. Right? I mean, you could live to your 102. You don't know. Yeah. Are you going to read them? Who knows? But <laughs> That makes me want to go take a nap. <laughs> Let's all go take a nap. That sounds nice. Uh, JT checking in from Australia. Can't hang around live today, but I'm on school holidays from work, so I hope I can catch some lives over the next few weeks. Cool. Have a good day, everyone. You too. Um, peace and love, JT. Upper management is going out of town starting Wednesday for two and a half weeks. I can do whatever the heck I want. All right. Go grab some peanut m and get, get some more Diet Coke. <laughs> and grab, watch, watch Stranger Things. Done. Okay. And I, wanna, and I want to stream because yeah. I like live streaming the best. Yeah. Well, you can't do that 24-7. I mean, some people do. Well, I you challenge is that a challenge throne <laughs> let's go do it do it what's your record it has to be like six hours maybe is it i more? don't think it's that high i think okay. it's in the four and a half range was that with us because i feel like we did that once it it might be i think james might know james what's james what's the record know. and the long because i think the longest one i did was la not last year but 2022 when i gave away books oh I yeah feel like that was like a four and a half but then i think you and i did one and, and i feel like bunk and i talked for a long time especially about wrestling um <laughs> that just felt like five hours for you <laughs> <laughs> uh i love jenny for harley and ivy it is indeed jenny for harley black white and redder that's really boss Thank you, Tyler. Peace and love. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mega Shrimp, sir, I'm not even going to ask that question for half an hour ago because <laughs> you're baiting me. How dare you? I love that question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Maybe they don't know. I, no, I think, I think based on the emoji, <laughs> he, he knows. We can go by that. Uh, actually, Al Pacino, name and drag. Oh, that's when we were Omnicat. You definitely know the creators, and Jess and I talked about them at length in DMs in a, a few years ago. Ooh. Jess, do you know who that is? You mean Tyler? Do you know who he's talking about? Uh, uh, I forget what what uh, what were the creators Some people doing on YouTube. And I was like, he's like, I'm not going to name names. I was like, name names. Okay. What were they? I forget what they were doing. It was something negative. I can't remember the exact. I it probably wouldn't be hard for me to go. This was on Facebook. I remember Tyler and I were talking probably 2021. Jess and I talked about them I at can, length and DMs. I can, I, I can uh, um, I forget. The creators were being negative on the internet for attention no tyler okay i can't find tyler's little comment maybe by the time we catch up again he'll tell us what that was referring to but 
he made some comment about other creators and how you, you're not like them. And how they're on YouTube? Yeah, they're YouTube creators. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, YouTube creators, not yeah. book creators. You mean like right. people like us that do YouTube right. shows? Oh, yeah. content creators. Um, I will research that between now and next Saturday night when you're back on. Yeah, I can't get to that comment because I don't, I don't know when it was. Name and drag. No, I don't think it'd be a good idea. She she texted it to me. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, DC giving out reprint copy today in Manhattan and Brooklyn. I got a copy at Soho News International Pop Up Stand. <laughs> Maybe next week will be the name and drag episode. The I also have a list hated. We should compare lists. <laughs> this is where my positivity gets overwhelmed. Uh, oh, we lost Kane. Okay, got to go shopping at Target. Thank you for being here, Kane. Yeah, I hope you enjoy Target, Kane. Yeah. Good times. Uh, okay, that was a while ago. Yes, people. <laughs> what? Okay, Jesse, do a similar thing with my cards, so let it marinate before finalizing the purchase. Good, 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 good. So, having I library halls have really helped me fill that need to buy books. Yeah, and he brings every week, almost every week. It's a giant stack of really, well, I don't want to say really obscure books. And I also don't want to say books I've never heard of because that makes it like I'm the ultimate judge. Very interesting books that are new to me. It does scratch that itch. Okay, I found the comment. <laughs> oh, what does he say? The original comment. Um, Jesse, you've always been a beacon for positivity in this community, especially when compared to certain other creators that I will not name drag here. And I'm going to uh, send you my guess in the private chat. Oh, okay. It especially is considering funny. you guys right. have talked about this person. So, okay. Perhaps. Okay. That's just a guess. Who knows? You know. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's certainly possible. My local statue has a my local library. <laughs> my local statue has a library of Harvey P. Carr. Yes, it was Chris. I am surprised how, with how much I found. I wish I started going first because I have found so many books that I've purchased before. Love for the DC app. Yeah, DCBS, I've started to hear some things about. I haven't um, visited DCBS in a long time. I don't review everything I read because I don't usually have much to say about the book. If you want to know what I thought, please feel free to ask me. Okay, good. That's on the Discord that Omnicat won't join, um, which is Maybe fine. One Maybe one day. Oh, yeah. My last DCBS all is basically held hostage, too, till November. That's all I hear anymore, you know? Yeah, I have heard that. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah we still need to do that. Oh, that's right. Reed yeah. has some. <laughs> you know what? Mary and I would be a great, both judging that, we would be great at that, actually. Is that something I really want to do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it'd be hilarious. Oh, hi. Your comment's hilarious. I don't think, I, maybe it was him. Oh. I'll have to look. Oh, Bunk asked about the secret topic at 314. <laughs> uh, 
uh, just sec booster. She's talking to Rai Chancellor. <laughs> Sorry, he had stuff to say. <laughs> oh, to you personally or for the yeah, chat? he's going to the store. Oh, can you get me some peanut M and M's? Um, I don't know if he can get that at a hardware store, but actually, maybe. Probably. That's where I. That's where I get my yeah. frost stop. Is yeah, at the hardware I'll, store. I'll let him know. Well, and ours has a uh, Spreckers, so you know what? Ooh, ooh so does ours. That's the best. The best. Have you had the Spreckers? Do you like a grape soda? Uh, I like grape soda, but I've never had Spreckers, Spreckers has a grape soda. Grape soda changed my life. I don't even like <laughs> regularly drink grape soda. I loved it as a kid. Yeah. Spreckers grape soda. I'm actually gonna text him and be like, "Hey, could you hook me up with a grape soda?" <laughs> Wow. Okay. You gotta try that. You gotta. Um, maybe I'll make sure I have one for the show next week. And you get grape soda, and we'll get Mary to get grape soda. We'll have a grape soda Ooh. fest. I love this. Love it. Okay. That's what the name of the show will be. Grape soda. Grape soda. <laughs> awesome. Um, I what books will you be going over? I'd love to make sure I read them too. Uh, I don't know. Kristen's not really reading much. But, um, well, also, I didn't know we would all have homework. Like, well, we're just going to be getting grape soda. Yeah, that's the homework right now. <laughs> so, we could talk about probably what we've recently read. I hope by then I'm I plan to read something tonight because I need to do it. Yeah, uh, Booster. If if she tells me what she's reading, I will let you know in the Discord boosters in the discord so i can i can let you know what we'll be going over um and i'll let you know what i'm going over i okay i'll tell you right now it's going to be starting this week and for the rest of the week i'm going to be reading the krakoa era of x-men starting with reign of x and i'm not <laughs> <laughs> he said definitively <laughs> I'm, I'm not Huff, 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 huff. Uh, 8 p.m. is doesn't work for. Oh, Saturdays are out. Peter M's already said the weekend's out. And the weekend starts like halfway on Friday. So anything Friday through Sunday, because he's in New Zealand, doesn't, doesn't really work. Kristen is always right. Thank you. It's almost 11 p.m. for me. I don't even know what I'm writing. What bar? Let's promote our show. Uh, let's see. It's in April. April 6th. Oh, I'm doing a double header next Saturday. Really? Yeah. 1 p.m. Unstoppable Bar will be on. Going through the stacks of shame that I read back in November or whatever when we pulled it. So that's at 1 p.m. And then... Saturdays at 8 p.m. will be the Grape Soda Fest with Kristen, Raid Chancellor, and Miriam Ma. And if you want more streaming that day, I will be on my dad's channel that morning. What time? Probably, I think it's been 8.30 Central, so 9.30 <laughs> Eastern. I know. I know. I hate it, too. <laughs> Guy won't move it back. It's very annoying. <laughs> reaps asking this uh it's slow <laughs> it's slow so if anyone's interested uh again hit up read readwired at gmail.com but you know you've been getting some out of here um just so you know discord's a really good place to sell books my audience would love to buy your books would they though yeah <laughs> all you have to do is post a picture in there of, of my whole darn shelves? Come on. <laughs> well, do you want to sell them or not? Listen, Jess. It's a lot okay. of effort. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll, well see. Well, you could, you could post. You don't even have to take a picture. You could just post what Reed's got uh, on the spreadsheet. Yeah, I guess have, so. Okay, have Reed join and leave maybe you I'll, out of it. Maybe I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, have Reed join and post the spreadsheet. Okay. You got it. Okay, that's your way of saying you're not doing it. Okay. <laughs> um, 
in the U.S. during 2020, seven out of ten people read one book. In 2023, it was 54 percent. 54 percent. What? What was 54 percent? I guess have read one book. Oh, that's less than yeah. seven out of ten. See, he's using the right system. Ten. One mm -hmm. through ten. Uh, happy birthday, Jess. Thank you, Reap. I had something planned for your birthday, but it's been delayed as I've been preparing for a promotional course. That's very kind of you to think of me, uh, Reap. I appreciate that. Reap's a good person. Ada, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, CNS, SSSS is here. FOMO as well as buyer's remorse are all just part of being a collector. Comes with the territory. Use any lessons learned to grow or curate your bookshelf as you see fit. Yes, we. I agree with that too, but Kristen's fine with it. Well, I mean, most people have that problem. I just don't think it's ever going to happen. So I yeah. don't like, you know, I'm like, whatever. No, I said Jake said it was fine. I Sometimes I feel like Huff is on a completely different planet than I am. Wasting time. No, I'm not going to do that. What is a day in the life of Jess when upper level management is away? Uh, I might Instagram it. WrestleMania? We could have WrestleMania in the Discord. Thank you. Bar, are you remembering that you're on next week? You can't wait for this week to be over because you're so excited to be on my channel, right? Ah, here it is. My longest show was four hours, 18 minutes, and 55 seconds. We've almost been on three hours. I forgot that we started late. No, I'm not highlighting those. I'm not highlighting that. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay. All you need to nope. know, Tyler, is that was my guess. Yeah, not highlighting that. Perm, short-term pain. Love the t-shirt, Jess. Where have you bought it? Is it still sold? Silk. Uh, it wasn't graffiti designs. That's where I got all my DC shirts. Um, I think your best bet is probably to Google it. You can take a screenshot of this and Google it and see where it's sold. Let me take your, there you go. Oh, that's worse. I'll be like, make yourself big t-shirt guy. Oh, highlight. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Okay. So take a pic of this and then go on Google. I because this shirt's at least four years old. I'm sure it's still sold somewhere. I think it's boss because I think silk is boss. I'm sorry I can't be more helpful. Uh, okay. <laughs> Pineapple soda is where it's at. I don't think I've I'll try pineapple. That. Yeah, that sounds kind of good. Maybe I know, we should uh, have a soda tasting party next week. Grape, pineapple. I know um, Bucky's has an amazing blue coconut soda which tastes kind of like uh ocean water at sonic if you're familiar with that which is oh, essentially I... sprite and power in, in coconut oh okay it's refreshing i don't have a bucky's or a sonic near me 
I have a Sonic, but Bucky's is too far, unfortunately. But it's great. So if you're ever there, grab that. They have like okay, I, sodas. I, I they think probably we, have a pineapple soda, in fact. Yeah, we should keep in touch with each other this week. Uh, see what soda we can find. If we can find a pineapple, it might be a soda tasting show. Okay. Um, if that sounds good to you. I don't know if anyone else would be up for it. But... Well, you were the you 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 and I are the people that are driving this particular car. So <laughs> I meant like Mary or Reed, but uh... Reed won't be able to participate. Oh well, that's true. Because you know. Well, we just need him. Maybe we'll just both delightfully have a nice Sprecher's grape soda, and you can tell me what you think. You don't want it to be more. I mean, we could plan a whole thing together if you'd like, but I don't want to take away from the other two. The other two what? Who are the, the other two? Who will be involved. <laughs> I don't okay, remember well, them. Well, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Upper level management will be away, so who knows what I will be up to. Just do you know about Batman Dark Age? I do. Same team as Superman Space Age. Yes. And for the first time in a long time, I'm having, I'm going to read that book in singles and then I'll get the inevitable hardcover. But yeah, I, I'm excited to read that in singles. <laughs> That's true. I bought it live on air and it's over there in the stack. Let's go. Oh, this is kind of negative, William Lee. I'm not giving up on Krakoa. I've, I'm reading straight through. But go ahead. Yeah, actually, I think that's... Okay, actually, I take that back. That'll motivate that's, you, right? Yeah, I think that's a good That's a good bet. Let's hear people's over, under, when I give up. Like, name the book where I just go, okay, I'm done. I don't even want to keep going. Is that the idea? The over, under. William just trying to motivate you. That's it. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe. Thank you. Please give your daughter my best. I will. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. This is for you. Do you plan to check out the new Ultimate Spider-Man eventually? I do. Um, I would definitely like to. I've heard a lot of good things, and I love the originals. So that's one I do want to read. Lockdown dramatically increased reading, and it only has half the population reading one book per year. 100%. Bar's going to bed. Have to be a bit. Whoa. Thank you for staying with us so long, Bar. I can't wait to see you next week at 1 p.m. I'll talk to you in the Discord, and I'm very excited to talk about those books. Ah, okay. Thanks, Tyler. Um, Hayden, Jess. <clears throat> If DC told you they'd make a Phillips Harley Omni, but you personally had to buy Omnis of every run you hated first, would you do it? This sounds like a F. Mary Kill type of situation. If they told you they'd make a Phillips Harley Omni, but you personally had to buy Omnis of every run you hated first, would you do it? Um, no. I, I wouldn't. I don't I mean, I'm actually fine with the standard hardcovers for that. I am not sure I'm going to upgrade if they make a Harley Omni. I didn't upgrade my Rebirth Deluxes to a Harley. I, what? To an Omni. I'm losing my mind here. If I had it. Up. Oh, unlike y'all, some of us have work tomorrow. I used to have to work weekends bar. So I feel Ew. for you. I feel for you. This has to be a troll. Rhubarb. Well, no, rhubarb. I've I had strawberry so. rhubarb pie before. Yeah, that doesn't sound bad, actually. Yeah. Well, uh, you know where? Wait, no. I could go to Rocket Fizz. They have all the sodas in the world. That's where we found, like, the ranch dressing soda and stuff. So we, I would love to, like, plan this out with you because there's a place in Cincinnati that we love going to and there's like walls of like weird sodas. Um, but we don't have that here. <laughs> so. 
So. so how far away is Cincinnati? Like three and a half hours. Okay, so this would have to be a special show. Yeah. Planned in the future for when you go to yeah. For when you go to Cincinnati. Okay. Well, let's just have it be the grape soda show. I'm and then that. in the future, we'll do the rhubarb soda show where we taste <laughs> all these. Uh, Kelly and I made a video a couple of years ago, uh, gross soda taste testing. It's in my library and it was like spare rib soda and ranch dressing soda. I remember that. Butter soda was the worst. Yeah, we yeah. had a spit out bucket and boy was it. Yeah, it was awful. Eek. Uh, no, it is cotton. Thank you. Marble Shakrita skill is polyester. Uh, Bucky's Vanilla Cream Root Beer. Whoa. I haven't tried that one, but I've seen it. So I definitely Ooh. do. Uh, yeah, we do have to plan out a soda show if we're going to include this. Uh, oh, but I, I don't have a Bucky's to go to. Yeah, mine is hours away. Um, when you get those sodas, are they Bucky's label or do they just care? They're Bucky's label, but they don't have like um, bottles or anything. Did I freeze or did you freeze? Are you there? Yeah, are you there? Yeah. I, huh, I wonder. Let me go yeah, to the bottom. Jess is frozen. Who it was. I was trying to figure that out. Oh, Jess. Jess okay. froze. Are we back? Yeah. I can see you leave. Just froze. Just froze. Just froze. Just lives again. Okay. You did it. I did do it. Okay. I don't know what I did. Uh, there it is. Omni dog and daughter taste test gross sodas. Speaking of soda, what was the last book to receive a root beer bath? I think Krista knows the answer to this. Yes. And why can't I think of the name of that book? Because you completely I... blocked it out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> it was on a show right? with Kristen. Sorry. Was it user? Yep. Okay. You remembered. Spooey. It was a book was called it called? It was a book so, called User, so which bad. won a Glad Award. I, I, I'm wondering if the committee that voted for that book to win actually read the book, or did and that they was years ago. So I would did, hope there's a different committee. <laughs> I, I mean, to receive a Glad Award, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know how that book wins an award if you read through it. I think somebody somebody must just said, okay, this has LGBT characters in it. Fine, it wins. Messed up. Hey. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh. Ah, Spooey asking the good question. That is what my video is that I'm going to make tonight about all the DC black label oversized books. And I, it might've been Brett that suggested that ranking all the oversized hardcover black label books. That's what I'm going to make a video of tonight. Uh, you know, my favorite is not an oversized black label book, but it is a black label book, which is of course, Peacemaker tries hard. Oh, that's a black label book. Yeah. It's oh. just not an oversized Oh, standards okay. Yeah, I was just asked to do the oversized ones. Uh oh, here's a bunch of things that I missed. Uh, I love when you do burger bets with Lou. <laughs> the only good thing at Sonic is the limeade, dude. Have Hi. you had the milkshakes there? Yeah, I totally disagree. Yeah, they have good milkshakes. They have good slushies. The strawberry yeah. slushie has no strawberries in it. Come yeah, on. and then they have that drink that mixes slushies and milkshakes together. Oh, 
Yeah. Frick, tricking Frick, I lethal. Yeah. Yeah. I good. actually, when I go to my LCS in Annapolis, about half an hour away is a Sonic. Now you got me thinking because we're going to go on a super diet when upper management gets back. So my last chance to have anything Sonic would be while she's gone. Do it. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's go. This dude's coming with me. <laughs> I'll have five new cats in my house. That's great. Soda Tasty Party. Heck yeah. Uh, okay. People are predicting where I'm going to give up. There's that. Okay. James, can you keep track of these? MD says I'll give up there. William Lee said uh, he gave up there. Rhubarb soda. Okay, this was back. Uh, listen, y'all. Just finished X Factor before me and Max. I wouldn't bet against him if he gets motivated, and I think he will. Freddie knows. My bet is he'll give up at the final issue of Fall of X. Is that the end of the Krakoa era? And this is what Gary has to say. Uh, AS mentioned Spreckers used to make a locale root beer. That was amazing. They still make that. So heads up. It's out there. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Children of the Atom. Children of the Atom. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> Have you ever quit a major story before, though? Quitting one series is one thing, but quitting a whole line is another. Uh... Well, Batman Nightfall made me quit Batman for like five years. <laughs> does that count? I feel like that counts. That doesn't count? That does count. Oh, it does count. Yeah. I think. But yeah, because I stopped right when it, as Azrael took over. I know nothing about the Azrael era. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. It was dreck. It was awful. It was blech, totally mid. Frozen, frozen, frozen. I'm back. Look forward to the Ruby Beer. Soda fountains with Bucky's proprietary blend. They sadly don't have like bottles of it. Which is oh, AW cream soda with a large scoop of vanilla chocolate chips makes me go Homer Simpson drool face. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, what? I don't. You know, honestly, I don't know anything They've about you. That, yeah. They. Oh, they are. Interesting. Just after you read Batman Dark Age One, you should make a video telling people how good it was. That Halloween cereal tasting show was pretty fun. Thank you. That was with upper level management. She had fun. She wore a witch hat. Your video tonight? Well, well, it seems my mind reading machine is finally working. Yeah, I'm going to, right after the collected editions show, I'm going to do the, uh, make a oh, re recorded. thumbs up. Oh, how'd that happen? Up. I don't know. I think you're, you were kind of like this, so maybe. Oh. Now it won't do it when I'm doing this. That's weird. Hey, what what the hell? Okay, good. Whatever. Um. Oh, and I'm all caught up. I have only read some of Krakoa, but what I know they did with Laura, I really don't want to read the rest of it. Seem to recall the Abnet and Lanning Marvel. Oh, that's right. A.S., you're completely right. I gave up on uh, the Cosmic Saga when I hit the Darkhawk book, books, or whatever. That's, yeah, that broke me and made me stop reading it. You're 100% right. Good memory.
cheat code is to skip any Krakoa you aren't invested in, but most of it is awesome. I'm reading everything. The Drek, the Dross, and the Great. I'm okay. Uh, I think this is a good time. Peace and love, everyone. Thanks for a fun stream. AS suggesting it's time to shut the stream down. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Good job, good AS. Good call, AS. Yeah, very good call. All the places that you can find the Comic Slayer are in the description box below. But Comic Slayer, why don't you tell us when you're not on this show having the time of your life, <laughs> where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube at the Comic Slayer where we do have a lot of hauls <laughs> pre-recorded from time, uh, including library halls and things like that which is fun. Uh, Reed and I will be putting out a video sometime very soon. Uh, it's going to be a big one. So look forward to that. And Mary, Mary M, you all may know her from the chat. Uh, we do a weekly stream when we don't have other things going on. That's every Thursday uh, evening at 7 Central, 8, 8 Eastern. Um, we do that live. So you can check out the live tab for those if you're interested. We, it's all always reading updates. We're talking about what we read recently, what we want to read. If there's a haul, we'll do it there. Things like that. Nice. Very nice. Comic Slayer, it's always good to talk to you. Always good to see you. Very happy that we were able to do this show. Uh, you can find me here on this channel, Omnidogs Vault, on Instagram, Omnidogs underscore Instagram, where I actually put stuff up this week. Shock, I know. And you can find me in Hard Discord. Me <laughs> Thank you. Um, and you can find me, yeah, in Discord. Hit me up in Discord. I love talking to people. Um, yeah, 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 I do. I love talking to people. It's fun. So um, thank you to everyone appreciate everybody's nice comments appreciate comic slayer being here appreciate everybody's thoughtful comic comics appreciate everybody's thoughtful comments on the uh mini controversy i stepped in uh but i only stepped in it really to rant against the guy calling me old and i did it in an, uh, what i thought was a lighthearted way so i don't think i'm going to be going back to reddit dread it i like that hayden that's that's pretty funny so uh peace and love peace and love and i will be using our theme song to play us out thank you both thank you both i was reading what next imagine i said Good i thought you were just thank you deuce and i which i get <laughs> thanks from both of us <laughs> uh we appreciate everybody and i'm going to use our uh and thank you all for the nice nice birthday wishes um i've got super dry mouth but i'm going to use our song to play us out. Peace and love. Peace and love. Still one more. Roll! Oh, stop. Hey, Now here to see the Omni Dog and Omni Cat show is the place it's been if you'd like to know more about the books that they've read. Kristen likes Lumberjanes and Steven Jess likes to grow Jimmy Olsen